You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. I loved going to the gym to fight, like to spar. And, and I enjoyed it. Like, I used to get a thrill. I used to get a thrill, and I still do even more now, of, like, being hurt, but hating people. I never had no mercy ever. Like, all my training partners, I'll tell you, like, as much as I love them, I'm quite an evil bastard. Like, <laughs> I, I, I love fucking inflicting pain. At the moment, I'm just like, boxing is just a shambles. Like, the, the best fighters aren't fighting the best fighters. Like, right now, I think the fight to make at every way to Tyson Fury and Joshua, I don't see... Mm-hmm. I, I don't know enough, that's why I say I'll never comment on stuff I don't know enough about, but why can't that fight be made? I just started having like, murder with this group of lads, but at that point the, the club was just going insane, I felt like everyone was having murder when I think back to it, and I, I some, some lad come behind me and stabbed me and I didn't feel it, I had a white t-shirt on, because when I looked at, at it after the, on the cameras, you see what happened, so I'm just like hitting everyone and everyone in, 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 in my way. And this lad comes up and he, get, he stabs me once and then he walks away. But I haven't moved or anything. I'm just fighting, I haven't felt it. And then he comes back around and he's like, fucking hell, this, this fucking kid's still fighting. And I remember being in the ambulance and I was going to the woman, just tell me if I'm going to die. And she wouldn't answer me. And I was going, just tell me if I'm And she kept turning head and I was going, they had me strapped with my arms and I started like shaking the thing and I was going, just fucking tell me if I'm going to die. I just think back to myself and I, I think when I'm talking with you now, I think like, the first few months I had a girl pregnant there, I had no money. I had a little fucking shitty, I was living in a little box room with a little bit of, of a fan. And I was, what was I over there for? What was, I was chasing something. I was chasing what, what I'm doing now. A lot of people will come to me a lot of times, they'll go, well, what do you think of Conor McGregor? He, you know, he hit that old fella. And I go, and I, go oh, I don't really give a fuck, you know, he's a fucking unbelievable fighter. I don't really care about his thingy life. People go, oh, he's a wanker him, look at how he's, and I'm like, Mate, how could you not change? He's had 150 million thrown at him. He's been the fucking best in the world. He's the most fucking one of the most famous athletes in the world. And it, that all happened in a, such a short time. Boom, we're on. Yes, and today's guest, we've got UFC's Dan Toe. How are we, brother? I'm good, mate. Very good. Thanks for coming on the show. No problem, mate. You've made a great name for yourself so far in the UFC. Flying. Mm. Still only 27. Yeah. Like I said earlier, I feel as if you've been about for fucking 10, 20 years. I don't know if it's the noise up you give everybody online yeah. and the shit that you do, but <laughs> phenomenal fighter. Yeah. Great story, especially coming from the streets to eventually achieving what you're achieving at such a young age. Phenomenal. So I take my hat off to you, brother. Thank you. How are you? I'm good, mate. Yeah. I just... Uh, just all trying to survive now, aren't we, with the world? Yeah. What, what's happening, you know what I mean? But it's a weird time, isn't it? Yeah. I thought we were speaking before, weren't we, mate? You just, you just got to crack on, haven't you? Exactly, just man. Gotta, yeah, keep your head above water. A lot of people are sinking, so it's all mixed reviews, people thinking this and that, but for me, it's just focus on yourself, focus yeah. on your family, and then everything else will take care of If you don't business. know 100% what's fact and what, you, you shouldn't be, like, that's as I said to you before, Probably is something going on behind the scenes, what we don't know about, whatever, but we none of us know. Everyone's like claiming to know. They, they know what's happening, they know this is happening, but who really knows? Yeah. I, I certainly don't know. I don't know. So. People are saying guessing. You watch a couple of YouTube videos and it obviously makes people an expert. Yeah. But again, whoever's making the YouTube videos, we're talking pure Google solicitors, pure I call them. <laughs> Google solicitors. They could be talking pure pony yeah. as well. So. They're just Google yeah. solicitors. Google what they... Th- Google pandemic and a million things will come up and they'll go right that's true that's Google solicitors mm-hmm. mate they, yeah, so, they don't know it's what's it's a happening. weird time but yeah. it's got to crack on mm-hmm. I always go back to the start with my guest brother yeah kind of where you grew up and how it all began where's the start <laughs> do you know what mate fucking I didn't really like I, I don't like to I wouldn't ever like to sit here and disrespect people who've actually come up really hard and come from the streets because I come from the streets of Liverpool but you know, it's rough and it's tough, but I, I've i never had this... I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, struggled, there was... You know, we never had money for food or stuff like that. I, I had a good upbringing. You know, I was a little little shit on the streets, but I had, I had a good life, a good upbringing, and my only problem was... I used to just love, I used to love fighting. I used to always get into fights. So, you know what, mate? I actually, I played footy, football for a long time, and I was actually an all-right little player. And then... 
when I was like 12, 11, 11, 12, I started going to the gym with my dad, around the corner of the boxing gym. And as soon as I hit a bag, mate, that's where it began. Where do you get that fighting from? Is there anybody in the family a fighter? No, like, me, me dad, uh, me, da- me dad's a big, you know, I'm a big guy. Me dad's a big guy, you know, uh, it's funny because I've got the nickname Gorilla. He actually looks like a fucking gorilla. His, <laughs> his hands are huge, but, uh, you know, he, he, he can have, a, I can imagine me dad, I've never seen him fight. I can imagine he can have a scrap, you know, he's a big dude, but he, he wasn't a boxer or a fighter. Me, my sister, you know, I've only got one sister. All, all my dad's family on that side, all into cars and stuff, and all my mum's side, you know, just got normal jobs. So I always often wonder to myself, like, is there a past relative along the line mm. who was just like me, fucking... Not a bit, a, bit, <laughs> a bit fucked in the brain and uh, just fucking could fight like mm-hmm. fucked, you know what I mean? So I don't know where I, I got that from. Like, I, I can't say I got it from my dad, even though, you know, my dad and my granddad got me into fighting at the start, you know, when I was about to leave, my dad was like, come on, come to the boxing gym with me and we'll just, you know, you can crack on it. And from there, uh, I, just, I just fell in love with it. And I just thought, right... I feel like I've learned what I needed to learn in school now. So I'm not going to go to school no more. I'm going to dedicate my whole self to this. So when I was about 13, I, st- I stopped. I was in like a programme and uh, it was like a naughty boys programme. And I had to go to the, like a church and do the gardening and that. So I'd do that, right? And then on dinner time, I'd get my bike. I'd go to my gra- I had a key for my granddad. He would work on the wagons away and that. I'd sleep and then I'd bike the gym which was about 40 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour maybe on the bike. And I'd done that every day and I stopped going to school until my mum found out. And there was just, there was like murder over it. And it was like, you know, what are you doing? I was like, listen, I, I want to just fight. I said, I've learned what I feel like I need, need. I don't feel like I need to learn no more in school, you know. Even though I was probably on the brink of getting expelled and everything anyway. And she was like, no, you need school. This fighting is just a, a phase you're going through. And I was like, it ain't, you know. I was like, y- you're going to see. And, you know, I had a, a lot of... My mum supported me massively, but I had a lot of arguments. Like, my mum wanted me to... My mum was a good mum, you know. She wanted me to go to school, learn, get good fucking good exams and, and all that stuff. And I just was like, nah, man, I'm, I want to be a fighter. I'm, I'm, and I'm fucking really good at it. Like, she should come up to the gym and see me. And that's that's just... From then, I just created something on my own. And then at that point, me and my dad weren't uh, close no more. I just started taking myself off to the gym. And, and Why were you not close? No, we just like, I've never really spoke about this. <laughs> my dad will be watching this, but me, we just, me, me, me dad split up with my mum. And then like, we just sort of gradually distanced. Like he got like a, a new girlfriend and a new family. And it was probably more to do with me. Like he, he, he made attempts at speaking to me, but we just grew, like we just, Distance, we, you know, I still, sp- I wish them a happy birthday today. It was birthday, but we just don't, we don't speak. And so from then on, it was me, it was my granddad who was like, my granddad would just pay me subs for the gym. I never had no money to pay the gym at, at one point, and he, he'd just pay, pay me subs. So I was biking to the gym. I was getting to the gym any way I could, biking. I was, uh, I was getting the bus. I was getting lifts off guys if they lived around the area. Because with the gym, I, my first gym, my Muay Thai gym, was like forty minutes away from my house. But I started Muay Thai uh, by, by my house with a guy called Simon. And then he moved the gyms. He moved gyms. He went to Heighton, which is, I lived in Walton, which is about 40 minutes away. But that was my first gym. So I was making any attempt to get there. And my granddad would just support me, you know, with bits of money and that. And I was just, I was totally dedicated. Where did you get that passion from at an early age that you wanted, you knew exactly what you wanted from such a young age? I, I don't know. I just... I seen fighting, I seen what I could do, and I seen how quickly like my my thing was always I wanted to be I wanted to be technically the best. I wanted to like just be a superior fighter technically. Like there's fighters who are strong and tough and big knockout power and stuff like that. I just always wanted to be technically f- far superior. And I noticed that in early age I had that in me. Cause at that age I was like 13, 14, 15, I was sparring with men and physically bigger people and, and, and all the kids who were around my same age and I was just better. Like it just got to a point in the gym where I was just better than everyone. There was no challenge anymore. Like I, I was I was so skilled and I'm not blowing my own trumpet. I was, you know, me, me, me Muay Thai coach had vouched for me and, you know, obviously after Muay Thai I went to MMA but that's a different story but at that age I didn't want to do anything else. I only wanted to train and fight and that was it. Passion for it, love straight away. Did you know you could make a career from it? Yes, yeah. an early age. Did you have good guidance from your trainer? 
Yeah, of course. Like he'd take me off to the training in in Leeds with all the top the top fighters from there, and uh, he'd get me fights around around the country. Uh, do you know what? I actually my first professional fight in Muay Thai was actually in Scotland in a Greenock. 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 Yeah. yeah. Fucking crackpots down there, mate. I swear we went in and everyone just like yeah, and I was just like no fif- teeth. Fucking yeah. I was just yeah. fifteen. I was like fuck this shit. Oh, I don't like up here. And then like. Uh, I was like fight, and the guy I was fighting was like 26, and I was like, ah, oh, fuck this shit, mate. I'm not into this fight, and I was so nervous. I was like, ah, oh, fuck. And then I went in, and I was just like, I just smashed him. And then like, I got like 300 quid, I think, for my first fight, and I was just like, that's when my coach have to come on, me. let's get out of here, because they're all just like, hey, yeah. fucking. Your scouts cunt! And I'm like, oh, this is mad. <laughs> so that was my first fight, but we 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 travelled. We went to Canada. Uh, we went, we, I, went, I lived in Thailand for, for a stint. I mean, I, I, I've, 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 I've still, the same passion I had then, I've still got now. Obviously, you, you hit speed bumps along the way and the road and blah, blah, blah. But at the start, my thing, I had just all my mates from the streets and that my thing was just make money any way you can and train to be the best. I always had the mentality, if I ever think that I'm going to be second best, I'd, I would have stopped there and then. But I knew I could I could be the number one at, at, at fighting, just fighting in particular. So that's why I never stopped. Because if I ever sat back and thought, I'm not as technical as maybe him or him, I think I'm going to stop because he'll always be ahead of me. I could never live with that deep down. But I know, even up until this day, like I'm still fighting to be the number one. Like in my eyes, what I'm in now, the UFC, when you're the champion, you're at the elite level, the elite of the elite of the elite, you're number one. So that's what I'm still chasing now. But back then, it was the same mentality. If I ever stopped for a second thought, I'm gone. I think I'm only going to get to be like number five or four. I don't think I can be as better as that guy, let's say, whoever the number one was then. I'd have stopped. That was like my mentality. And I don't know where that main mentality mm-hmm. came from. I don't know if it come from my mother, my father, my granddad. None of them were ever fighters, so I, yeah. I can't tell you right now where it came from. You've got to have that belief, no matter what it is for anybody watching, no matter what it is you choose, you've got to believe you're the cream of the crop, you've got to believe you're the best, or you will just accept and your existence will just not be as great as it can be because there's levels to everything, there's levels to the game, man, and if you're at such a young age, it's like you're travelling everywhere, you're constantly wanting progress, you're constantly seeing yourself as number one. It's hard work and dedication as well. Did, yeah. How did your friends treat you? Did you have any friends when you were in your teenage years? Yeah. Or did you distance yourself from no, everyone? I, I, do you know what? I, I grew up in a rough area. Uh, I had, I had, you know, my friends, but I, I, there was like a point where I was just like distancing off to something else. Like a lot of them like were involved with, you know, bits of crime and whatever. And, you just see yourself, you know, we had no arguments, nothing, but you just see yourself sort of growing further away because you're just chasing something. And you know what's funny? My mum, she still love, lives around where I grew up. She she loves it around there. And I see all the lads and they're all, they, you know, they, they just they treat me with respect and they're like, they, 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 they love what I've done and, and what I am doing. And, you know, I'm not one of them. Uh, I, I don't like the cliche thing. I don't forget where I've come from, you know, where... Uh, like you see a lot of rap guys like, yeah, I still go the hood and that. Like, I, I don't even know what that statement means. <laughs> like, I've, I, I, haven't for, I haven't forgot where I've come mm-hmm. from or, uh, you know, uh, pe- people say statements like that and I think it's their own insecurity because they, they have forgot where they've come from and they have let money get the better of them and fame. And I would be an absolute gobshite if I said now, yeah, I haven't forgot where I've come from. Money hasn't changed. It changes all of us. Yeah, definitely. Maybe it changes you for the better or for the worse, but it definitely changes you. Changes you. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It, you, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't sit here to you and lie to you and go, "Yeah, money hasn't changed me. I'm still. I'm. I'm just that until from 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 this place. Do you know what I mean? I am. But certain things happen are happening in my life right now, and have happened. They've changed my mentality. You know, I, I've had loads of money. You know, you get this fame where you, you walk along, people are just like, Darren Till, Darren, Darren Till, and you're just like, wow, this is great. And it changes you. Of course mm-hmm. it does. You, you'd be a liar if you said it didn't. Yeah, it makes a weird feeling, though, to a lot of people I speak to. You become a recluse. People who have then getting it because you can't be asked as much as you, people say they don't want to change. When I mean, people are constantly wanting your attention, it can be draining. Oh, of course. And you can find out, fuck it, I'm just going to stay in. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, I, I, I'm the same. I get like anxiety. If I think I've got to go somewhere and I'll get notes, I'm like, oh, fuck, I'll just, 
I'm going to leave that. Do you know what I mean? And, mm. and uh, listen, people say to me, do you get bored of like, taking photos? And I always say, the same, oh, no, of course I love it. <laughs> That's a lie. That's a blatant <laughs> lie, of course. You know, uh-huh. there's, there's times when, like, maybe I'm having a bad day. I, I, you know, up to this day, I've never I've never said no. I, I don't, you know, for photos and that, but, or, like, if people want to have, a, you know, a chat. I can't have a fucking 10-minute chat with everyone, but there's days where you have your bad days, and... I'd be lying if I said some days, oh no, I don't care if I that. Some days you're just like, I just can't be asked. Just let me get to my destination where I'm going. Let me do what I'm doing. And, you know, uh, you, you get a lot of guys, let's say famous guys, and they're like, oh yeah, no, fame hasn't changed me. Or, you know, I don't care. I get as many photos. I've got time for everyone. No, you, you haven't because you need, if you had time for everyone, you wouldn't have no time for yourself. Yeah, your family. You have to look after yourself, yeah, number man. one, your family, as you just said. Mm-hmm. You know Definitely. I mean? So when you started get after your first fight, did you start getting a buzz for that, making a bit of money? And... No, 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 I didn't. In my tie, there's no money to be made, mate. I purely just done it for the love. I just, I, I st- do you know what? I st- as much as like, I fucking, I love money and I love cars and watches and, and houses. Every time, I, obviously, I'm fighting on a bigger level now. Every time, and my coach will vouch for this. Every time I'm fighting, and the contract comes through, and like, I have to sign it. I can imagine a prob a lot of guys. Let's say, like for instance, Conor McGregor. I can imagine he looks like right, I'm getting that much. Yeah, fucking. Get, I, I don't like to look at the money because I think I haven't earned that yet. I need to earn that as soon as I fight. Like you know the fight. So to this day, I can I can safely say maybe there's a bit in me that thinks about the money and stuff and and blah blah blah. But I do it to be the best. Like that's that's just truthfully. Like I do it to be the best. Do you know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. That's at the start when I was fighting in like Scotland and getting 200 quid and 300 quid. It it was just purely for the love and to be the best. You know, I was fighting in Canada, I was fighting in Thailand, I was fighting up and down the country, Leeds, London, everywhere, and I never made any money ever until I, st- I changed over to MMA and then obviously you're going up the ranks. But at the, st- at the start, mate, it was just purely for the for the love. For the love. Were you enjoying just the escape of it, just getting out, trying to keep off the streets and... Yeah, I, I wouldn't necessarily like say like that. I, I just, I just loved fighting. Like, every, <laughs> uh, you know what I mean. Every day was a pleasure. Just to, like, did you enjoy getting hit? Yeah, I really do. Is that like a sense of self harming? It could be. Yeah, I, I, I do. Enjoy, like, there's, a, there's actually a clip on my social, on my Instagram, of one of the guys in the gym. He's a heavyweight, Tom. And on the video, you see, I drop my guard, and he just wallops me, and I go, "Good shot!" Like. I do enjoy it. So at that time, I loved technique and hitting pads, but I loved going to the gym to fight, like to spar, and and I enjoyed it. Like I used to get a thrill. I used to get a thrill, and I still do even more now, of like being hit, but hating people. I never had no mercy ever. Like all my training partners will tell you, like as much as I loved them, I'm quite an evil bastard. Like <laughs> I, I, I love fucking inflicting pain. Yeah. Now that sounds bad. That's just my mentality. Get I think a you need a mentality. What? You need to be a bit, all UFC fighters, you've got to have that psychotic kind of thing to get in there and listen, it's life or death, man. Yeah. It's, it's no fucking about. Especially that, I've seen some of your fighting. fights where you've had them on the floor and you're letting them punch you. Yeah, and yeah. I'm thinking, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's true. That's guilty as child. But I, I, there's, a, there's a guy who came to the gym the other day. He's been in a, a family friend for years. Uh, he's a boxing coach. and He's a fucking, he's a hard bastard. He's old school. And he come and watch the training, uh, the MMA. And he's just like, you guys are fucking insane. He's like, you're throwing in the air and you're landing on your knees and your shoulders. And you, he's like, this is a vicious, vicious sport. And it is. I think UFC, well, I'm not going to say UFC, I think cage fighting is the most vicious thing around yeah, nowadays as planet. a sport I wouldn't would you ne- I wouldn't necessarily call it a sport it's fucking it's just barbaric isn't it yeah but it, it is. is an art as well it's a craft for sure to be to be the best let's say to be the champion in the UFC or to be the best in mixed martial arts you, you have to ultimately be for instance say a black belt in every area you you, mm-hmm. you have to have mastered the art of mixed martial arts it's not like boxing you train one art or Muay Thai or kickboxing in MMA, there's so many different factors and yeah. ways you can lose and win. So to master that and to be the best, it takes a lot of years. Yeah, but it just shows you how far it's come over the last 10 years to now compete in boxing, which was probably untouchable. And nobody thought anything would ever compete with that until it's just boomed. Yeah, boxing's a touchy subject. 
like because as I, I I started boxing, I love boxing. All I've got loads of friends who are boxers, but at the moment I'm just like boxing is just a shambles. Like the, the best fighters aren't fighting the best fighters. Like right now, I think the fight to make at heavyweight is Tyson Fury and Joshua. I don't see. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know enough. That's why I say I'll, I'll never comment on stuff I don't know enough about. But why can't that fight be made? It's like, money, isn't it? It's like, money, just, politics. Yeah. Wait until they both get to a certain age. Mm-hmm. So, in in my opinion, now UFC and and let's say MMA cage fighting has took over boxing. Who picks your fights? Is it Dana? Yeah. Or do you get a chance? Or do you get a say? Yeah, I think when you get to a certain level in in MMA and obviously in the UFC, where you, you, your main event and all around the world you have a say on who you fight not that I pick and choose but you know you ultimately want to choose the best opponent for, for your for your style so you know I'll speak to Dana or the matchmakers and, and they're like you know we want you to fight on such a date you know there's three opponents names you can pick from main event who do you want I speak to me coach who do you think's the best opponent we, we'll fight him yeah and that's as simple as that it's as simple yeah. as that yeah what age did you go to Brazil so I was I was 19 and uh, I was 19 going on 20 I went on the 25th of December to Brazil Christmas day yeah and I came back exactly exactly to the day four years later Christmas day Mm -hmm. because you fucked off because you get plugged yeah so I was at that point I'd I'd switched over were you a loose cannon at that age 19 I just fucking loved fighting. I, I, I just, <laughs> but outside the yeah, ring. Yeah, I wasn't into like guns and knives. That mm-hmm. that just wasn't my thing. Like all, all my mates fucking at that time like went into it and that and were just mad. But I was just mad where I just wanted to fucking fight with anyone and everyone. If there was a problem, I'd be like, yeah, I'm there. And I, I, my culture, you know, he, he, he loved the way I was in the gym. I trained really hard and I dedicated myself, but then he'd see me going off and like uh, causing trouble. And getting into troubles, and you know, I was fi- I was finding ways to earn money, and, and and I was always getting, I was always having bother with like maybe a few lads, a few gangs, and whatever. And I were, I was in a party, wasn't I? And uh, I wasn't having trouble with this these this gang of lads. I was just in a party, and, and one of my mates was just fighting with this gang of lads, and you know, obviously, just fucking being psychotic, I just went over to just try and sort it. So I'm just, I, at the, I just started having like murder with this group of lads but at that point the, the club was just going insane I felt like everyone was having murder when I think back to it and I, I some some lad come behind me and stabbed me and I didn't feel it I had a white t-shirt on because when I looked at, at it after the, on the cameras you see what happened so I'm just like hitting everyone and everyone in in, in, in my way and this lad comes up and he, he stabs me once and then he walks away but I haven't moved and I'm just fighting I haven't felt it and then he comes back around and he's like fucking hell this, this fucking kid's still fighting and he does it again and then me for like I'd say 10 minutes after that I was still fighting I was fighting with the doorman I, do you know what just to like put it in a nutshell I fucking battered everyone in view like I couldn't be stopped people were smashing bottles on me head and everything the doorman were fucking even cracking me and I wouldn't go down I was just went psychotic and then I got backed up by the doorman and, and loads of people. My mates were just going mad. Like, I don't even know where they were. I got backed into a corner in the toilets and they were like, Darren, you need to, like, I knew the drum. They were like, you need to stop. You've been stabbed. And I was like, I haven't. I was going mental. And then I looked down and my top was just red. It just changed the color red. And I was like, whoa. I was like, nah, fuck that. And I started, I was on the, like, the toilet seat thing and I was kicking the drum and that. And then as I've come out the toilet, I'm still fighting. And next minute, I've just got like a surge of like, like I come down and I just went, whoa. And like collapsed on the stairs and I was like, this is what I remember back to. I was like, whoa, I can't even move. And then the doorman, they dragged me up to the, to the front doors of the club in town. And the head doorman, he pulled me against the wall. And this is the God's honesty, I remember this bright as day. So I'm sat there and he's going, you've been stabbed and I need to put my fingers in your wound. So he, he, I think he had like army so he put he put his fingers in, in, in my wound. And he's going, I need you to stay awake. And I was going, nah. And I kept trying to like shut my eyes. He was going, Darren, I can't let you shut your eyes. You, you're not dying. He was saying all that stuff to me. So he had his fingers in my wound. And, and like, I'm just like that, whoa, what's going on? And I remember like seeing all people around, like crying and that. And then I seen like blue flashing lights, the ambulance, and he still got his, and I'm just, I wanted to go to sleep at this point. I was just like, well, nah, just let me sleep. And I, I believe to this day, if I would have like went to sleep, I would have died. Because the, where I'd been stabbed was so close to my arteries. Like, even the doctor who, who uh, done the surgery on me, he was like, Darren, 
one more little bit and it had, it had, it had ruptured both your arteries, you wouldn't have survived. So like I think of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I remember being in the ambulance and I was going to the woman, just tell me if I'm going to die. And she wouldn't answer me. And I was going, just tell me if I'm... And she kept turning head and I was going... They had me strapped with my arms and I started like shaking the thing and I was going, just fucking tell me if I'm going to die. And she was like, no, you're not going to die. And I remember getting carted off to the hospital and I woke up like two days later so, and, I'm, and my mum uh, and some friends and that like standing stand at the end of my bed. How was that feeling? <sighs> Do you know what, mate? I, 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 I'd be probably lying to you if I said that. It meant to me, I was just like, fucking hell, I got stabbed. Wow. Man, I was like, I was like, I'm going to have to fucking, I'm going to have to kill that lad in the scene. I was like, but a lot of people cared for me, especially in the gym. A lot of people come to see me and I'm not going to name no names, but they all come to see me and just give me words of wisdom. And, you know, when I got out, the fear, I didn't go home. At that time, I can't even remember where I was living, mate. I'd been kicked out my mother's, uh, I'd, I, Lived with my uncle, been kicked out. I'd lived with me fucking, my granddad been kicked out, gone back. So I think I was living in my granddad's. I didn't go my granddad's, I didn't go my mother's. I went straight to the gym to see Colin. And I, I remember it was a Tuesday morning. All the fighters were in there. Terry, Mark, and I remember seeing Colin. Colin just looked at me and I was on crutches and I just sat on the ring. And like, Mark and a few of the lads come over to me and Terry and that. And then I waited till the end until to see Colin. And Colin was like, listen, I, I want to chat to you later on. Like, we'll have a chat and that. I said, all right, do you want me to come back, Col? He said, yeah. So uh, I went to my granddad's, fucking just had some food, and then I went back to the classes in the night. And I, I, Colin was sitting uh, on the radiators, and he said, come over here, son. So I went out, hobbled over on my crutch, and he went, listen, what do you want from life? He's like, what? He's, he's, just, he's very straight and dry, Colin. Like... As I say, he's the most influential influential man in my life right now and has been for years. But he just went, what do you want? He's like, I'm not just going to blow smoke up your ass. He's, he's like, you've got the potential, Darren, to be the best in the world. I, I've seen it. I can make it happen, blah, blah, blah. But he's like, you're 50-50 now. He's like, you're training, but you're going out and you're just being a fucking moron, basically. He's like, what do you want? And I was like, you know, Carl, fucking, I don't really know. I just want to be the best. He's like, well, if you want to be the best... I'm gonna I'm gonna send you to Brazil. I'm 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 gonna send you over there. You're gonna stay there for as long as you need to stay, and get yourself get yourself dedicated. Get yourself. Don't think about anything else. Don't think about having money or anything. Just fucking go and smash it. I was like, all right then. So I, like a lot. I know ninety percent of people are like, nah, I'm not going to Brazil. Comfort zone stuff like that. And I was just at that time, even though I had family and that, I didn't really have anything. I didn't have like. Nothing was important to me. Are you so, homeless? Sorry? Are you homeless? No, I wasn't. No, that's what I say. I was floating, at, floating, yeah, I was about floating from house float. to house. Basically, I had the, like, when I say about, this is backtracking a bit now, but to be like open and honest, I, I had a great relationship with my mum, mother and father growing up and me and my mum were always very close. And then when I was like 15, 16, <clears throat> an incident occurred with my mother. I went out, it was New Year's Eve, went out with my friends, uh, my friend Christopher, Come back about 12 o'clock. We've been out, we've been out, you know, just fucking, just causing me. That. As you come do. Back. Yeah, as you do. I said, come on, you can stay in there. you know. <laughs> I lived in my mum's box room, just fucking small room. He's like, yeah, all right, son. So then we've gone to sleep and I've just, my mum's quite a hothead. I probably get me... Is that what you get it from probably then? get me angry. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm two things. I'm very angry uh, when I need to be and I'm stubborn. Me, and my mum's two of them mm-hmm. things. Like, uh, I just woke up to screaming and my mum's like... At that point, me and my mum were going down a spar because she seen what was happening with me. You know, she knew I, I, at that point she like accepted fucking Darren's really good fighter. Like she'd been to see me fight every blah blah blah. But she was like, he's fucking mental. Like he's loose. Like he's fucking. He, he's fucking. I was fucking. I was just fucking loose, mate. I, well, as I say, I wasn't a fucking mad criminal. You know, I'd fucking done things and that, but I wasn't like involved with guns and knives. I was just fucking wants to fucking bash anyone. But there was none of this, like, in my head, respect for anyone either. Like, I always used to think, who's the hardest bastard? And I'd fucking kill him. You know what I mean? I don't... I hope the fucking hardest bastard in the field. And I was like, what are you on about me? There's, there's that many. But, uh-huh. So, I woke up to screaming and shouting. And my mum was like, you can get out this fucking house. And I was like, what the fuck's happened? I'm one of them, it takes me five minutes to wake up. My me, me room was full of sick. So, my me, me friend had threw up in, in the middle of the night. So he's just like sat there in the corner and he's like, what the fuck? So, and my mom's, so me and my mum just started screaming at each other. My friends left. 
So she's at the top of the stairs at this point, and I'm at the bottom. And my mum used to uh, like have all her shoes on the stairs. I don't know if you do that, but yeah. you put your shoes on your stairs. And she's going, I want you out this fucking house, you're a piece of shit. And I'm like, oh, fuck off. And next minute, I've grabbed the shoe and I threw it, yeah, out of anger. And it's fucking clattered my mum's face, yeah. And I've turned around and my mum's crying. And she's on the phone. And, I, and, I've, and I've just went, what the fuck? And my mum had a boyfriend at this point. He's come running out the room, not to fucking front me. I'd fucking just kill him. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what the fuck have you done? What's going on? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. And, and my mum's like just crying. And I've thought, no, nah, I need to just go. I've run out the house. And I don't even know where I went. I can't remember him. I thought, I'll just give it hours and my mum will be okay. When I've come back to my mum's, she wasn't there. No one was in. So I've, I'm in my room. Next minute, I hear a knock on the door. And it was the police. So my uncle, who I'm very close with, uh, you know, nowadays, he 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 knew, he I'd lived in his, uh, not no, not that point. He just knew that basically I was a loose cannon, and if, you know, I've hurt my mother, and something needs to be done about it. Like I don't hold no uh, hatred towards any what he done. So he rang the police. The police was like, "There's been a a, 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 a fucking." A complaint or whatever he's like we need to take it down the station i was like okay and at this point i didn't know what had happened at all okay whatever so i got out the police station the next day and uh i'd found out like me mum's fucking like i don't one of her bones had like fractured off the boot and i was like what the fuck have i done i was like wow i need to speak to my mother because at that point me and my mum were really close she's like my best friend uh so i went off to my nan's uh me my, my, my mother's uh mum mum and I was like, I need to speak to my mum. She was like, she doesn't want to speak to you. And I was like, oh, what the fuck have I done? Like, wow, wow. So she wouldn't speak to me. And then after a few days, I was with my other nan, who's my dad's mother. And I finally got to speak to my mum. I was like, mum, what the fuck? And she's like, Dan, you really hate me. She's like, I'm not even bothered about the fact that you fucking threw a boot at me. I was like, well, mum, you know I didn't do that, like, on purpose. I was like, I fucking, I fucking didn't mean it. She was like, well, you've done it. He's like, she's like, that's not, that's besides the point. You're just fucking, you're just fucking mental. She's like, I don't want you back in the house. And I was like, okay. And then that is the story leading up until I was about 19, where mm. I was just floating from place to place. Like, I lived in the gym. I lived in my uncle's. I lived in my, grand, uh, my granddad's. Uh, I lived with friends. I wasn't homeless. I didn't, I, there was never a day where I, like, I didn't go out. That's why I don't want to sit here and say, oh, I had a hard life, you know, I was home. Yeah. I wasn't. It's just I, people were taking you in who yeah, could, ex- who could yeah. handle you at that moment yeah. until you cracked up. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, so... That was basically the story up until 19. I was just fucking in love with the gym, but I was also just in love with being a bit of a... Nutcase. Nutcase. Mm-hmm. I'm still a nutcase now, but yeah. I'm a sensible nutcase, yeah. I think, before I <laughs> you do handle things. handle it better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You grow up, mm-hmm. you, you mature. Do you think the stabbing saved your life? A, a, a lot of people ask, ask me that. People even day to day now, they, they all they, they know about it and they say... Does it, they, I think, if, if I'm being honest... For a coach like Colin to, to just totally send me off somewhere else, like as his student, just to like, I don't know, I, th- I think I think Colin saved my life. I think that incident and Colin jumping in saved, saved. Because I think if I'd have stayed around, maybe potentially, yeah, I could have been a world champion, but I don't want to say something cliche. If I didn't find fighting, I'd either be dead or in jail. Yeah. Every fighter says that. Shut the fuck up. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to say that. But I, I probably was just going down a road that mm. maybe I wouldn't have liked. Maybe a fucking life of crime. I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm a fucking criminal because I'm, I'm not. You know, I've done fucking things. I've fucking been arrested that. But I don't know. I, I just think that whole incident had to happen. And me going to Brazil and the fucking things that happened over there have just basically, I think the four years I spent in Brazil have just moulded me into the person I am today. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not a great person. I've got my faults, but I like to think that them four years grind and, and fucking in the dirt moulded me because I had, I, I'll, I'll be honest, when I say like, I weren't homeless and everything, when I, them first like few months in Brazil were fucking grim and hard. Like I was alone. How come? Because the day before I went to Brazil, I, I was fighting. I, like So I'd had that stabbing. The day before I went to Brazil, there was these lads uh, I'd had a few run-ins with. And I was in the pub, like, doing me goodbyes and that to everyone. Uh, funny and funny enough, that, that pub is where the, the Smiths, you know, the boxers, the Smiths group yeah. around. And on, on that night when I was fighting, five minutes before I was fighting, I was speaking to the boxer, uh, Liam Smith. And the next minute, he's probably just looking over and going, that fucking dad, and he, there's something wrong with him. He's fucking looking at him over there. He's fucking having made with lads again. And I remember just fucking, 
I've murdered these guys. One guy glassed me and everything, and I went and got stitched up at the hospital. Come back the same booze. I tried to have like murder. One of them actually fucking clipped me like with a good shot. Right, not a fight. He fucking hit me. I was like, fucking hell, that was fast. Mm-hmm. But got on the plane, and I'm like, just on this plane, two black eyes, <laughs> stitches everywhere, and people <laughs> just look at me and just sat there like that. <laughs> Fuck are these consoles. <laughs> and then I got to Brazil. And Colin's sort of affiliate out there, Marcelo Brigadeiro, who, who uh, you know, uh, took me in, as to say, was greeting me at the airport. And he was like, what the fuck's happened here? Tell he's like, we need to just change this. And then from there, mate, I, I booked the ticket from the 25th of December to the 13th of June. I was going to stay there for six months. And a series of events just must have... Maybe, I, I don't believe in all... I don't know what I, I believe in, really, to be honest, but... Maybe the world wanted me to stay there longer. Or I don't know, maybe the world wanted me to have my daughter. I've got over there now. Uh, it was tough, but the things I got from it, I got, I got to the UFC, I got my daughter. I found friends, lifelong friends. I found a new language. I found different parts of the world that you'd probably never see a lad from Liverpool. So, you know, uh, Brazil was just fucking mental. Yeah, that takes a lot of bottle though, at 19 to... Take jump, but that shows you your character to realise that you were going down a fucked up road. That the two options probably were, like you say, as cliche, but prison or dead, because you potentially would have probably killed someone mm. at that age of the violence, the anger, the frustration. That's only at 19. Mm. So once you start hitting 22, 23, 24, you become an even different and animal. Liverpool's a violent place, isn't million percent. It's funny because you have these conversations with your mates and you go, you go, like, oh, he's, he's the craziest. And then someone goes, no, well, he's the craziest. Like, Liverpool's a place where there's a lot of egos yeah. and a lot of... It's like, full of nutcases. Yeah. I love Liverpool, but you know, it's full of crackpots. Yeah, like, yeah. I always say to me, it's like, I'm the artist of Liverpool. I, I guarantee I'm not. I bet yeah. you there's a few fucking people yeah. I don't even know about who fucking wipe the floor <laughs> me. Liverpool has got a lot of good people, but mm-hmm. there's a lot of violent people who don't give a fuck who you are, what you're that until I don't yeah. give a fuck about you, mate. Mm-hmm. And so it would have been either a rise to the top in Liverpool, maybe just fucking whatever, or it would have been, oh, this dad until he's getting out of him, we need to fucking Take sort him out, him out yeah, whatever. too so, violent. Yeah, it could have been maybe a life of death, but... But that's all here and now, isn't it? That's all, it's all in the past. And it moulds you. Yeah, and it, that's what moulds your character, and I think that's why you're so well liked, because yeah. you're unpredictable. Very. Do you know and what I mean? And I think that's why people love you, I think that's why you've got your whole city behind you. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I like to think that these events and all, I, I, I'm one of them, me, I ha- I've probably, I'm probably never going to gain, I'm probably never going to be like a model boy, like let's say Anthony Joshua, who wants to come, like, I, I, I'm not the biggest fan of Anthony Joshua, but I'm just using him as an example, like I think he's a fucking terrific boxer, I think he's going to, him and Fury's going to, but he's like in the Google adverts and the links and he's a fucking, he's just, He's probably just a great person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then you've got me, who just fucking slags everyone off at every point. You know, I've got, I'm sort of like, I'll just say things, what I believe in, and no one's going to stand next to me and go, Dad, you shouldn't really say that because some people aren't going to agree, agree with it. Like, if you say that, a lot of footballers are protected by agents and that, like, what they can say and can't say. UFC fighters, MMA fights are a little bit different, a little bit more rugged, and I'm probably the most rugged out of all. I'm like, I'll just say what I believe in and then deal with the consequences after, whether that's good or bad. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's just your character. It's just me character. It doesn't change for no one. It's just, that's what sells fights as well. Yeah. And, and the UFC's like that, you can as a free-for-all. Yeah, but like going back to Brazil, that's 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 probably where my mentality came from because I was, I was just like moulding myself day by day. I didn't know where the next bit of money was coming f- for rent. Then at that point, I was training in the gym like uh, with all these fucking mad favela Brazilian guys. Like, I've been to some favelas and I've seen some fucking things. Like I've seen about five dead people over there and, and I've fucking I've had fucking fights with favela kids over there. Like the maddest thing you could do. And like it's, Brazil's just fucking mental and as soon as I, I would got, have suited you at your tea then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, like a little mental kid like me going there and seeing mm. what real is mental, like poor. And, and favelas and all that, you think, wow, like Liverpool ain't got shit. Like England ain't got shit yeah, it's on It's luxury this. here compared to some places. It is. I was in a great place. Don't get me wrong, this city I lived in was great. It's like a first world country, but just everything. I, I got there in, in fucking the start of January and it's like, I seen the, the girl, the, the girl, like the girl behind the reception, obviously, you know, we, we, we had the doors together and, and 
you know, in the, in the first few months, you know, I had a girl pregnant over there. <laughs> like, <laughs> Darren, Tillers, Darren, Darren Tillers arrived. Yeah. But, do you know when I think when I think back to it, I think, wow, like fucking, I've got a seven-year-old daughter, like mm-hmm. a seven-year-old. I'm twenty, I've got a seven-year-old daughter who's just a little Brazilian child now. We, you mm-hmm. know, we we only speak over FaceTime, especially now because of COVID. I can't go over there. I had the trip planned to book there, but. I just think back to myself and I think when I'm talking with you now, I think like the first few months I had a girl pregnant there, I had no money. I had a little fucking shitty, I was living in a little box room with a little bit of, of a fan. And I was, what was I over there for? What was, I was chasing something. I was chasing what, what I'm doing now. Searching. Yeah, searching and, and you know, what's funny is I can probably say when I got over there, I was sensible. I wasn't, I was fucking st- still mm-hmm. nuts. I was like, you know, I, I like a drink. I was fucking drinking over there. I was, I, but I was, there was there was a goal, and the, every day I'd speak to Colin, and Colin would say, "Are you the best in the gym yet?" And I'd be like, "Nah, this guy's beat me." Call, we'll fucking beat him tomorrow. Next day, are you the best in the gym yet? Nah. Say what you want to be, Darren. You want to be say, "I am Darren Till, and I will be world champion." So I'd say to him, "No, put it in fucking capital." Like my coach doesn't give a fuck. He just said, put it in capital letters now. I'm Darren Till. I want to be a world champion. Next day, are you the best yet? No, so and so's beat me. Fucking purple belt, he leg lock me. Fucking tomorrow, wipe the floor with that cunt. Back again. We haven't spoke for weeks. Somewhere have you been? Sorry, call fucking. Don't you fucking go weeks without speaking to me? Are you the best yet? No. We'll say you are that until, and you are gonna be a world champion. Say it at night. That's it. Fuck this shit. Say it twenty times to me, and I'll write it. Boom, 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 boom. Right, I'll speak to you tomorrow. And that was just like a reoccurring thing, and then. When I got me fucking, you know, going forward in a few years in Brazil, when I, I got that fight, when I'd beaten everyone in Brazil and I'd won that fucking belt and everything, and the contract came for the UFC, Colin was like, said to me, coach, you'd already accepted it. Colin said to me, I didn't want this fight, but you know what? If I know someone can go out there and, 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 and do it, it's you because of your mentality. If it was anyone else, I'd have yeah. said, don't take the fight. He said, because I know how fucked up you are and how much you don't give a fuck. Do it. And I was like, Col, I'm going to stop this guy in the second round. He's like, I know you're out. I was like, Col, I promise you I'm going to stop him. Um, I'm, since I'm here now and I've had a few losses in my life and I'm, I'm learning a lot more, I'm still trying to find a way to get, like, I, that confidence at that time was just fucking unbelievable. I didn't give a fuck for no one. I, every day was like, I, I say I don't, I, don't wake, I don't wake up early now. Cause I'm, I'm one of them. I, I like to get up late, like mm-hmm. nine, ten o'clock. I, like to wake up. <laughs> I used to wake up at six o'clock, and my daily grind was wake up, mm-hmm. go and teach privates, go to the gym, come home, wolf your dinner, go back out, teach privates, train, uh, come home, wolf your dinner. In Brazil, they have the gyms open to very late. Go back out teaching eleven o'clock, right? Strength, strength, uh, strength and conditioning. Yeah. And that was just me every fucking single day, and I was thinking, there ain't no cunt in this fucking. Who's the number one in Brazil? And He's the guy I beat in my debut in UFC. His name's Wendell. Mm-hmm. It's big, fucking big, massive, huge black guy with arms like this. And I, I was just used to think, you're the number one cunt, I'm going to get you. So I was beating everyone, but that was just my daily grind. Wake up, teach, train, but speak to Colin. Colin be like, are you the best wrestler? Yeah, you need to be the best wrestler, darling, so these cunts can't take you down. So you need to pick uh, me, me wrestling coach out there, uh, Tim Rubik, his brain. Every day, darling, pick mm-hmm. his brain. Pick his brain, darling, every day, every day. And, and that was just my life over there. And why was Colin? Colin here in it? I've watched yeah. a few of his videos. Seems very nice. But I've spoke to the boys, and they say he's actually a nutcase as well. He's <laughs> saying, "Why you seem like a man who wouldn't listen to anyone? Why have you got so much respect for Colin?" Did this question come up the other day? I was actually speaking to a friend who's having a bit of trouble with his son now. Uh, his son's a boxer, and his son's getting to that age now where he's starting to like. His dad's a big fucking lump, and he's starting to size his dad up like. <laughs> I could take him and he said to me Dad I don't know what to do because he probably would fuck me I have to grab him he's like he's like what what, what was you like I was like well to be honest my dad's a fucking you know I used to get a belt off my dad my dad's a big fucker I said but when I got to like 15 I was like nah this cunt mm-hmm. this cunt ain't giving me no belts no more not a chance fuck that I'm 15 I'm fucking I've got I'm, I'm growing into a man try and touch me son see what happens slip bang <laughs> so he, he just said to me he said uh, I said yeah I, I said I don't really give a fuck for no one fighting I said you know if someone threatens me they're going to shoot me I'd be like oh fuck I don't need that shit but if we're fighting terms me dad I don't fucking fear no man I went but I fear Colin and he went why why Colin then I said I can't even tell you I said I'm just absolutely shaking of Colin and and then he turned and I was like he trains in a uh, gym and he's, and he's a big fucking dude he was like yeah I am as well 
<laughs> and everyone says the same thing. Like he's, he's fucking one of the most respected men. I think it's just the way he is. He just takes no bullshit. He's straight. He doesn't have no morons around him. And everything, everything he does, I believe hundred percent, is just for the good. Mm -hmm. Like he's not motivated by money. Even though he says to me, "Come on, when are we gonna make our ten million? He deserves that. He deserves. I don't deserve that U UFC world title. Colin Heron deserves that UFC world title. You know the guys who've helped me through the gym, coming up through the years, deserve that." But ultimately, when I get that UFC world, like I f I'll feel like when I win that UFC world title, I'll, I'll have completed life. Everything after that then is a bonus because I haven't been looking past that. Like I'll just have to sit back and enjoy my kids and my family now. And people say, yeah, because you're doing it for your kids. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not doing it for my kids at all. I got in this to do it for me. Yeah, they are going to reap the benefits of their father being a champion and having money and being able to brag to their mates about. I'm doing this for me, mate. But ultimately, when I get that UFC strap wrapped around me, it's coming straight off and it's getting wrapped around Colin because he deserves it. And yeah. that's what my friend was like. He was saying, why does Colin, like, why, why is Colin the only man then? I said, I can't even tell you myself. I said, I've just got so much respect mm -hmm. and I'm so disciplined. Like, I, I don't put a foot wrong in that gym. When I'm in that gym, I, like, I don't put a foot wrong. Like, I, I've never answered them back. I've never, I've never done as what I shouldn't do. It's outside the gym, he hates me. Do you know what I mean? Like, the cameras are I've off. Had, yeah, well, I've had, a few, I've had a few belts off. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing that for? Like, when I got caught robbing the taxi in a, in a, in, I was about to say Marbella because we were talking about that. Is that another Marbella. one? <laughs> yeah, a, in, in Tenerife. Mm -hmm. And I remember just getting the phone call off Colin and, and a, a, my friend John. And like, you fucking come and you got back here, we're going to fuck you. And I was like, that's me. Like, You're not going to fuck me if Colin's going to fuck me. And I got back and Colin's just like, you fucking little cunt, he's grabbing me. And I'm like, Colin, I'm sorry. He's like, get up to the office now. He's got an office. He's like, get up there now, you little cunt. And it's just, it's been that way since the start with Colin. And, and he's just the only man. Because if you said any other man now, I'd say, I don't really give a fuck. Mm -hmm. But he seems to have ingrained that winning mentality. See that repetitive with believing yourself you're going to be world champion. You tell yourself that stuff enough, you will eventually believe it. He seems to be on the path of the law of attraction and knowing what's going to be done and believing in yourself yeah, completely. Yeah, I think, I think totally he's, he, there's, there's method behind what he says and what he does. Uh, and to go back to it, I'm, I'm like trying to find that, what me and you, Colin used to have, because we see each other every day now. But in Brazil, it was just, it was just a tad different. It was just like... Every single day he was on me, and every single day my goal was just to not even be the best uh, fight in the world. It was to just annihilate the guys in the gym. And that, I'm not saying that in a bad sense. I don't want to injure a uh, long-term age, injure my partners. But his thing was, you need to be the best in that gym. Then you need to do whatever it takes. And don't get me wrong, when I was in Brazil, like I'm, 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 I'm not coming off here as I was, I was 100% dedicated. I was, but on a Friday night, I'd still go out and have a, a, and have a booze and and do mad things, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, it was just a bit more, it was a little bit different because I had nothing, didn't have anything. I didn't have, oh, I, I remember I used to question myself on a Friday when I'd be paying, I'd be like, right, you've got enough money here now to either pay your rent or eat sushi, yeah? And Brazil, sushi in Brazil is lovely. A luxury. It was a, it's a luxury. And at that point, I didn't have that luxury, so it was either pay your rent or eat sushi. Can you guess what one every time? Sushi, mate. <laughs> <laughs> one every time. And uh, there used to be the girl who used to fucking collect that rent. She was she was an old woman. She was she was a nice person, but she was fucking. Don't take one for the team, did you every month? <laughs> and <laughs> you tell us the truth, yeah. Mate. I have to tell the truth. <laughs> no, I didn't. You know when you say that I should have took one for the team now because the maid that I used to have for it <laughs> over fucking missing me rent. But James, do you know what? If I could rewind time now and do you know take one for the team, I think. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> but that was it every Friday and and, and and then she'd be knocking on Saturday where's the rent and I'd be like oh, I've got no rent I'll have to just pay you fucking I'll have to pay you next week I've always had this mentality mate you know where, where, uh, with money if I haven't got it I'm just going to tell you I haven't got it like mm -hmm. if I owe it's gonna, I owe someone money and they're, they're like the sign or the fucking just mental if, if you don't pay them that then they'll get I, I just ring I'll be like listen I haven't got your money you know I just have to expect what you're going to do to me yeah. you know? like, do you feel as if something's kind of a miss there's a wee link there from being 19 to where you are now do you not feel as if you've got that fire the killing mentality that you had then to now do you think there's something that you need to improve on this yeah see 
as I say, James, there ain't no one here next to me saying that and say this, say that. I, I'm just, I, I, I'll say to you what comes to mind, whether it be good or bad. I think that's the best remedy. Now, that's lost me sponsors in my life. That's probably lost me fucking friends in my life, whatever. But I'll say what comes to mind. Do you know what I mean? I, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm a great person. I'm a great fucking, do you know what I mean? But like, things happen in your life, like, you get to this stage now, like, a lot of people will come to me a lot of times, they'll go, well, what do you think of Conor McGregor? He, you know, he hit that old fella, and I go, and I, go oh, I don't really give a fuck, you know, he's a fucking unbelievable fighter, I don't really care about his thingy life. People go, oh, he's a wanker, him, look at how he's, and I'm like, mate, how could you not change? He's had 150 million thrown at him, he's been the fucking best in the world, he's the most, fucking one of the most famous athletes in the world, and he, that all happened in a, such a short time. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. can you just imagine that he's got like what 50 million followers on Instagram? He's got fucking millions, he's got every company wanting a piece of him. He's that's all happened fast. Now, man happened like that, obviously not on his scale. I'm still working to get there. But I I come back from Brazil and just had fights, 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 then had my big fight, and then just like came into money, cars, watches, fame, glory, people, everyone wanting a piece, do this, do that, do that. And it's just like you sort of lose, lose which way you're going. Like, I'm going, like, th there'll be days I wake up and I'm like, I'm putting too much time and effort into, like, my brand here, like, my watch brand or, or Raw Dog, or I'm putting too much time and effort in, in, into f building my house up. And I think, like, Dad, fuck everyone off, shut your businesses down, fuck your bearding kids off, put them in the street, get back mm -hmm. to fighting. I I'll have them days where I wake up and I'm like, no, you've put too much time into this. And in Brazil, there was none of that. In Brazil, it was literally just train, eat, drink fucking beers, fight. Saying he, the, the, there was no money, there was no clothes, there was no cars, there was no bills. No responsibilities. There was nothing. There was make your money for your kid and fight and, and just do that. And, and that was it, mate. Now it's like I've got responsibilities in Brazil. Like I can't miss a payment it, it, with my daughter. I had to go to court and everything over that. I, I have set up payments monthly. I pay way more than I should anyway. I always give extras because I want to see my child have everything. Of course. But I've got that. So every month I'm thinking, right, I have to pay that. Right, I've got to pay for my house. Right, I've got to pay for the cars. I've got to pay for my two kids here. You know, does my mum need money? Does me is my granddad okay? Is is are my businesses doing good? Have I put that post on Instagram? Oh, so and so asked me to to tag them in this story. Uh, I'm not getting it on Harvey, but just because they've asked me, I feel like so I can't, I'm not one of them. I won't do it for him, but you know what I mean? Just got all yeah. that, and it's like, hey, Dad, I'm fucking hell. You, you forgot about fighting. You forgot about the most important thing that you're here for. What's got you here? Yeah, what's got me and mm -hmm. what, what I'm doing. Like, if you said to me now, Darren, I'll give you a billion quid. You can fuck, I'd say, fuck your billion quid. I'll earn that on my own. I want to be a champion. Yeah. And I'm probably not doing things right now to be the champion. Like, don't get me wrong. I go in the gym every day and I fucking, I give me all. Like, I just give me all. Like, me, me body's broken because of how much I give. I'm, I'm, I'm a dedicated trainer. But then outside, maybe I'm getting sleepless nights. I'm, I'm having, I'm, maybe I'm drinking more than I should. Uh do you know what I mean? Like, my diet's not strict. I'm, I'm putting too much focus and energy into my brands. I'm putting too much focus and energy into going to get my car stick, uh, a different colour. That's all. F Why the fuck am I doing that? It's all bullshit. Don't get me wrong. Like, my business and my brands are important. But they're all just there. The things that should be important to me and every day I should wake up is gym, family, gym, family, gym, family. Mm -hmm. But you're identifying with it now. But now you know it's time to get back to basics. Yeah. You're only 27. The next five years of your life is when you're going to bit your prime. I believe you will win a world title within the next 18 months. You know that yourself. You've got that fire. You're identifying with these wee things now. It's just outside noise. When you're coming from the streets, basically homeless, floating around, and then boom, yeah. everything comes. You're thinking, wow, this is great. And you realise, wait a minute, it's all bullshit. Yeah, and it Liverpool's a place like that. Like, as much as I love Liverpool, Liverpool can give you distractions, the nightlife, the fucking, the, the, your friends, oh, let's go and do this, we'll do that, we'll go... And, and but don't get me wrong, I'm not just blaming it on Liverpool. As you said, we had the chat before, you, if you're going to blame something, you've got to blame yourself. You've got Are you to take easy led? Account. Yeah. Are you easy led? Yeah, very. Like, I'm, I've got an addictive personality. Like, I can't get into something. Like, the guy asked me before, he's like, do you play poker, Dan? And I'm like, I probably couldn't get into that poker because I'm so addicted to stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I'd probably just lose my head. <laughs> Start smashing people when you lose your yeah. money. <laughs> and also smashing smashing uh, money because I'm mm. like, I'll put a hundred percent in. I, I've always got this mentality, it's either not on a hundred percent. So I know for a fact if I enjoyed poker, I'd be a hundred percent. So I'd be like, that then 
the main focus again would get lost you get what I'm saying yeah. so I am easily led like if my friend rang me up tonight and was like Darren I've just got this new car let's go out racing I'm there don't worry I'm fucking there in five minutes whereas other people say oh no I need the next an hour in bed I'll think nah fuck the hour I'm going out racing cars with my yeah. friend or do you know what I mean Darren I've just got a new quad here are we yeah. out on the quads yeah I'm out do, do you know but what I mean being in Brazil for four years you've probably it's not as if you were in prison but you've probably felt as if you've missed a big part of your youth so you're maybe reliving a bit just now maybe the last year yeah. or two and you just need to be careful that you don't lose Live it all it too fast much. yeah because it is all bullshit you don't want to be sent to 32 saying I could have been the contender I could have been the world's number one because you've been so fucking close everything should be moderated as well yeah. like, as you said, like, I, I did miss that part all my friends were going to holidays Tribeca and festivals I was just fucking grand I'm with a daughter in Brazil do you know what I mean mm -hmm. like everything should be moderated like as you said to me I don't want to get too I, I'm addicted to, to my podcast now but I don't want to be 100% crazy over because then it, it, it becomes yeah. same yeah. as fighting you, you can't train 24 hours a day you you can't fight a fucking 100 times a year that's that's to do anything in life if you have if you have 20 fucking if you, bananas are good for you if you eat 20 bananas they're bad for you everything should be moderated so same with me yeah do that now and then Darren like la last night me and my friends went out for a few drinks we haven't seen each other for months obviously COVID that's okay That there's no problem with that now imagine just every Friday and Saturday I was training and then just going out drinking. That, that's yeah, it just defeats thing. the purpose. It defeats the purpose, what you're doing. Would you ever think about moving away again for six months, for a year back to Brazil? I've had the thoughts. I've actually had the conversations with Colin. I've said, you know, it'd be back good. Back to your roots. Yeah, I've said, like, you know, we, we should do a few months out in Dubai, Col. Or I, I can even go, if, you know, if, if, if you give the go-ahead or, you know, Brazil, I've, I've got a setup in Brazil, like, my setup's there, I can just go whenever whenever I want, but I I would also, I'm one of them, me as well, like, I, I'm not trying to say I like to run away from my problems, but I like to get away, like, be, something happen, something could happen, and be like, oh, I need to get off here, and be like, nah, you run away from your problems, nah, I just need to go and clean my head, man, like, mm -hmm. I would ultimately love to just get back to Brazil for six months, or go to, we've got a setup in Dubai, uh, go to Dubai for six months or, or I, I like doing little things like that I've done it to Thailand I've done it to the <laughs> Romania you know uh, I would love to do that I've actually had the conversation with Colin I think it's good for the mind just then you don't have these like every day you're just here there in your car mm -hmm. you've got your responsibilities if I went to Brazil now I ain't got nothing over there Yeah, I'm only going there to train so every day it'd just be everything's focused around training mm -hmm. Do you know what and I mean? it's constant if you're driving about here as well you're constantly on edge because even though you don't care you still do because you you feel as if you have to give your attention to people who want it and it drains you mate you've got to protect your energy and yeah. if you're thinking they're going away for six months I believe that's probably the right decision yeah. I ain't a coach or a trainer but just speaking to you it's thinking right fuck it I'm going to clear out the noise get back to basics and, yeah. and really focus on becoming that world champion yeah. do you know what I mean it's it looks like Connor's doing the same thing now he's, he's obviously had his rise and maybe a little bit of a tumble mm -hmm. but like when you look at him now on, 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 on social media it looks like he's, he's in just a little cupboard of course, of a course you've got to be it's like he's back you to look at his first videos I'm going to be a double champion I'm yeah. going to get all the money I want including yourself I'm going to be nobody can beat me mm. you had the belief then but same as Tyson Fury when your goals are set the law of attraction kicks into play you've focused on it you already believe you've got it and Conor McGregor won the two belts, so he kind of achieved everything. The fire kind of goes out a bit, and you feel as if what's it to fight for? Same as Tyson Fury, won all the belts, all the money, end up in the biggest depression ever. Mm. So it's again. I've actually spoke to him. Do you know what I mean? It's like, crazy. He says that, and people actually don't believe me. I was just fucking like close to suicide every day, and I was just waking up, and I was fucking smashing the fucking booze the and gear, and the, 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 the booze, and and I was fucking driving me for and I wanted to fucking kill myself and that. And I was, I watched it on the Joe Rogan as well, but I've actually spoke to him personally about it, and he's just like. I don't know what I was doing that and then something just clicked and he was like, nah, fuck this mate, I, I can be the best here. What, why, am I, why am I fat as fuck? What, what am I doing this for? And, and then now look at him, he's like my biggest inspiration. I just look at him and I think, what, he's, he's the main fucking man. Mate. Phenomenal, phenomenal the shift in the mindset. But again, these are the ones then who's been there and kind of the fire went out a bit to go, right, what, what made you change? They've got the key, they've done it. It's to block out all the noise. Everybody yeah, I, wants I a piece of the you. I think as you said to me as well, I'm one of these people, mate, I'm all or nothing, but I'm easily led. So I'll be all in, you know, like I, I am <laughs> yeah, very easily yeah. led. Like mm -hmm. I've, as much as I've got a strong mind, 
I've got a very weak man because if you put 10 cheeseburgers in front of me now, I'm going <laughs> to... So we die, folks. <laughs> you don't so have to make weight, though. You know. um, Same thing. I actually seen an interview. I, I feel like I keep harping on about Conor McGregor, but I seen he done a documentary and he said, we have reels in this house in the fridge, you know, just meats and process uh, and eggs and stuff like that because if someone puts a cake in the fridge, I'm going to eat the thing. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm the same. Like, if I had to make weight next week, <laughs> and you put 10 burgers <laughs> I just do not give a fuck yeah. what anyone says Colin could even be there I'm eating them 10 yeah. burgers mate do you think that fight could ever happen at 170 you and Conor McGregor no I think that's, that, just, that, that was just like at that, that time that when was he was f- flying yeah that was a little funny thing like I, I don't see me and Conor ever fight I mean, we were never going to fight I, I was at welterweight for, for the time being and I remember going to Ramfield and my dream is to one day fight around field and I remember thinking I could fight Connery if he, if he ever came up to 170. You know, imagine a fight like that. But that was I'm never gonna fight Conor McGregor's like a fucking I know he's fighting at welterweight now, but he's a featherweight. I, I'm like I know I'm gone up and right now, I'm like a middleweight, but even with my time off after we're taking on like I'm fucking sad me, I'm like a fucking light heavyweight yeah, now. Yeah, it's phenomenal what Conor McGregor's done to be fighting at three different divisions to one and two belts, they've created everything that he's set out to. You've got to take your hat off to that. Especially your hat off to him, especially when he's came from the streets as well. But again to be then becoming on path to be a ball you that shit's gonna affect you because you're thinking, What the fuck is going on? Do you know what I mean? To be flying on private planes, to be on welfare to then flying in private planes, it's it's nuts because you're not taught. You, has anybody ever come into UFC and, and tell you how to no, manage money? It's, it's, it's a funny... Uh, see, I know the footballers, and all that, they have agents, they have people around mm-hmm. them. Do this, don't do that. Do that and come on. Uh, let's you know, say for instance, one of the footballers up and coming. MMA is a bit more rugged and rigid. Like I was telling you about when I was sponsored by uh, Jim Shark. Like, so when, when they initially came to me, it was like... Uh, you know, we looked at their brand and it's like, they're like sort of, they're targeting the, the fitness model industry. Like y- y- your IG influencers, you know, that's what they, t- t- I mean, they're a billion dollar company now. Yeah. They've absolutely smashed the back off, Fair that, play, off man. it. So I remember them coming to me and I remember Colin saying to me, it's mad the way they want to sponsor you, Darren, because you're totally Out against there. everything yeah. they're there for. Like you're just, like the first meeting we had with them, I remember them saying, Darren, you see these memes you put up in like 2008, uh, 17, don't do that while you're sponsored. But I was like, fuck, it was a meme, right? And it was like a little fucking gremlin stuck on someone's body. And the, the meme was like, uh, like when you've had a wank and you can't be bothered wa- washing your cum off. And it was like, it was <laughs> disgusting. It's like, Darren. And I was thinking, okay, I can I can moderate it. But you don't have, you aren't half playing a, a, like a ballsy game getting mm-hmm. involved with me. And from the start, you know, like the, the guys who came to me and responsibly, the great guys, you know, they, they, they were sound and funny, but I was painfully being told off, you know, because like every day I was just, every day I just wanted to, f- I just wanted to offend people on Instagram. So I'm putting <laughs> memes up and I'm offending so and so and I've done this and I've mm-hmm. done that. <laughs> and it was like, uh, it, w- it was a mad relationship because. They loved me and they were like, yeah, this Darren's going to be a champion. We love everything he's about. He's about the streets of Liverpool and blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, their company head and their company based is all about like these Instagram... Clean fitness. cut. Yeah. So clean cut. I was their first ever like professional athlete, their, like fighter, let's say, uh, that signed with them. And, you know, great relationship. But from the off, it, well, it was just always like that. And then I had mm-hmm. obviously my first loss and then my second loss and then like the taxi thing happened and they sort of was like, you know, we're going to have to let you go there. And I, and I never not hold a, uh, no hard feelings towards them. Mm-hmm. Maybe it would have been nice to speak to them face to face and that, but... So they didn't do it face to face? No, the, the guy who I had a good relationship, he just rang me and he's like, Darren, you know, I think they, they had bosses involved. Like, Or did they use that an excuse because you get a loss? Could be. I, I don't know. To this day, maybe they thought, oh, he's had two losses here, let's... It's because you've already been on social media, me, Craig and Tony were talking beforehand, like when people give you shit, you just say, listen, I'll drive to your house and shag your ma. <laughs> <laughs> and I laugh, because that is funny, man, but why can you not give people shit back? Listen, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a weird world we're, live, we're, we're living in now, like, I know everyone, do you know, probably 90%, on, 90% of the people that follow me on social media are probably like, fucking love me and the other 10% probably just like I just follow him just to see how much of a fucking dickhead and a moron he is but mm-hmm. you see my whole philosophy on, on social media is 
this thing has come along now, this social media, and it's just, it's blown up, it's massive, it's huge. And everyone's just got an opinion. Everyone can voice their opinion, anyone can give you shit. Like, I, I, I get messages sometimes, I'll get, like, requests. I remember the first request I got that I showed my girlfriend, and I went, look at that, this was last year, and I went, look at that, and she went, oh my God, what the fuck? She's like, aren't you bothered? I said, how can I take that seriously? Someone had messaged me and was like, I'd put a story up on Instagram of my child and someone had messaged me going, oh, I'd love to bend that child over and fuck her up the ass. That me child was like one. Yeah, that's a different thing, man. That's a different level, yeah. right? And I just looked and I went, fuck me, mate. Now, that's social media. People can do that. People can make private profiles and do that if you got the profile we can put it up in the camera when you're speaking about it no was do you know a what fake account? it was just a fake account it was fucking it's just a message yeah. blocked it whatever but 90 percent of my messages are just fucking great messages that and this that can can you do this that and i'm a fan and then you get the 10 percent where it's like and especially how i've got my audience like my fan base are a little fan base on instagram it's all like they, i think they just wait for me to comment and, and and give shit and they're all there like with the popcorn like mm -hmm. oh it's gonna go <laughs> off it's gonna go off like i've got a brand made off like causing shit so causing shit to one of the other fighters uh, you know mike perry mike perry yeah so that is my whole thing but my, my mentality is i just don't take social media serious in any what way or shape or form mm. right now i've got two businesses i've opened with it and they're all online s social media based and they they you know they're me things but everything else like i just i just don't take myself too serious i just try to have a laugh i try to put up stuff that i think's funny if you follow me you think it's funny sad we can congregate then i'll put stuff up and people are like mm -hmm. people comment because they want to reply so people are like darren you fucking cunt and i bet your ma's a cunt you silly little cunt <laughs> and they and then they message back on love that mate love the reply big fan that's like what I've created, but it's cause I, I just don't take social media serious mm -hmm. in any way, shape or form. How did the beef start with you and Mike Perry? Was it was it true that you wanted to corner his fight and then fight him after that the was, fight? That, yeah, that, <laughs> I think he's going to fight me when he ultimately sees me. I'm going to have to like have some security because he's a hard little bastard. But no, he, it's a funny story, Mike. Me and Mike had an argument in 2017 after me fight with Calby. So he got up on the cage and I was just like, we can fight. And then I seen him after that on the bus with his girlfriend and I'm like, all my fans, I had like 5,000 fans, I'm like, all my fans are with me, I'm not going to go and start some shit while he's with his girlfriend, so I, was, I just looked at him and I just gave him a nod, and then I seen him at the airport, and, and some of my friends who were like, right up for a fight, they were like, I'll go over now and just sh take his jaw off, and I was like, you can't do that, mate, he's with his fucking girlfriend, so you know, I just like, sort of looked at him, nodded, and then in 2018, we was at the same hotel, in the UFC, and he just, it's actually on video, he just come over to me, he's like, no, he said to me on the bus, he was like, do you want to spar later? And I was like, yeah, all right, so I'm thinking he wanted to go to the gym with me, like to do a steam and so on. That's that's gen and I thought, fucking mad on him, does he want to see me dick or something? <laughs> <laughs> so then <clears throat> everyone was filming, he comes up to me outside the hotel reception, he's like, Are you up for this later, this spa? And I said, Yes, yeah, sir, whatever time. He's like, and he turned around and went, I I haven't got no gloves. And I went, What? I was like, What do you mean? I was like, you want a spa? I, I was like, I thought you wanted to like go to a spa. Mm -hmm. And he's like, look, he's fucking mentally, he's like looking at me all confused. And I went, yeah, if you want a spa, we can spa. So then later on that night, he's like, messaged me, he's like, are you ready? I was like, yeah, Sam, let's go. Went down to the uh, the gym in the hotel and we just, we done like five rounds of sparring. Who won? I'll never ever say. Never? I'll never ever say. I don't, I don't think, he's actually said loads of times, I beat that and that's why I busted his face up. If that makes him feel good and sleeps at night, and that's great for mm -hmm. him. But this is this is the thing. I could go to Tyson Fury's gym now and, and beat him up in a spa. I, he's actually come to my gym and we sparred and I took him down. I remember my fighter. Imagine me going around saying, beat Tyson in a boxing spa today. That sparring means absolutely Nothing. fuck all, jack shit. You didn't get paid for it. No one's seen it. Sparring's different. You don't have the nerves, the crowd, everything involved. Yeah. So for me to sit here and go, I won Mike Perry in the spa. That's bullshit because even if I did or I didn't, it doesn't mean a thing because then we could fight and he could just go, boom, knock me clean out. Mm -hmm. What what we, what really matters, the spa that I beat him in or the, the knockout, he's just placed on me in front of everyone. Yeah. So it doesn't, he's come out and said loads and I battered Dan in that spa. Mm -hmm. okay. Is he using your name to get recognition? Do you know what? I've, he's had a lot of uh, recognition since we've been arguing. I mean, he's, he has, I know he's completely fell out with me. Uh, I know he's 100% like, just probably hates mm -hmm. me, but 
I'm was sure. it proper hatred or is it just banter to get no I, th- I, th- I, th- I think it, I think it is proper hatred because we were having banter we were messaging each other and I was like I was messaging her saying come on this was the first lockdown I was like come on let's have a bit of banter come on let's fucking skit each other and he was like yeah yeah now American humour and British humour <laughs> it's two different man, things yeah. like yeah. a lot of the Americans who follow me are rad on my humour so they don't get offended or they're on it but especially my humour like I say to everyone Damn. don't what dark, oh. very dark. I can go as dark as you want. Like, don't, don't let all that offend you. Stuff and that. So we were having back and forth, calling each other fat cunts and blah blah. And then one day I just was like, "Listen, you little fat cunts on his ass. Like, I will fucking smash your jaw clean off, and then I'll raw dog your beard." And I didn't mean anything by it. And the post just went astronomical. I think it got like 150,000 likes and I think it got like 10,000 comments and my DMs were just going, I went, wow. Because I, I always say, I always say with my friends, I was like, raw dog. This was before I even ever created the brand. And uh, the post the next day got deleted and Instagram deleted my account. They, fucking, they do that on the regular now. I don't, I'm probably going to get deleted soon. And from that, I just didn't see or hear of him. He blocked me off everything. And I was like, nah, he's not serious here, is he? And he was. And from that, he was like, because I think he just met his, his current girlfriend who's pregnant now, and he was like, nah, fuck this guy telling him. And I was like, is he being serious? And then as time got on, he'd blocked me, but started putting stuff up, so I couldn't respond. And then I was like, yeah, he genuinely has got hated for me now. And, he, and then he'd done like interviews, like, if I ever see till, it's fucking, it's off, I'm gonna fuck him. I, I wouldn't spit on him if he was on final. I was like, whoa, mate, you need to calm down. You, you're in your feelings too much. Fucking hell, all right. Mm-hmm. But it offended them. What can I do? That's what it is, isn't it? That's his problem. That's mm-hmm. not my problem. If you yeah. get offended by something I say, that that's Tough. your problem. <laughs> Tough. Tough luck. That's your problem. Yeah. I, I couldn't really give a fuck. Like, mm-hmm. The funny thing is, I was on Twitter last week, right? And uh, my management company actually messaged me the other day, MTK, and they were like, Darren, we've had thousands of complaints in about you on Twitter you fucking offended the transgender. I was like, what? So there was a transgender girl last week on Twitter and there was two posts and some guy had sort of said something like, what if I call you a tranny? And she's put it up on that. But the post on the left, he was talking about like a suicide thing and that. And I replied, to be, to be, to be fair, he's not wrong. She must have thought I was saying about her being a tranny. Mm-hmm. I couldn't give a fuck if she's a tranny, black, white, yellow, compare. I couldn't give a fuck. And then that was it. The, the Rainbow Brigade, as I like to call them, <laughs> just swarmed in on me and they were like, you fucking racist, this, that. I was mm-hmm. like, even if I said, to be fair, he's not wrong, how's that being racist mm-hmm. or homophobic? It's not, I couldn't give a yeah. fuck if you've got a dick, a fucking <laughs> fanny or whatever, do you? That, that's, that's what I'm saying, do you know what I mean? Like people, if people are getting offended, that's your fucking problem, man. Mm-hmm. Like, there's there's things that you can never cross the line, you can't, racist, racism is wrong. Being a homophobe is wrong. Them mm-hmm. stuff are wrong things. And if you are, you probably are a piece of shit of a person. I'm not homophobic. I'm not racist. I just... Like to I, stir I'm shit up. I'm just on the line. Yeah. I stir shit up. And if you get offended by a post I put up about you, about, about, I was telling you about the fear of 500 slags, that's your problem, man. I'm just mm-hmm. having fun. I'm not trying to... Yeah. I'm not trying to cut, like be serious. I'm just laughing mm-hmm. at myself. I'm laughing at you. You get offended. Yeah. That's your fucking problem. So when you started moving through the ranks at the UFC, your first fight was three weeks... Uh, just a three-week call, wasn't it? Three weeks before the first fight, UFC, the Brazilian. Yeah. So when and then you took him out straight away. Yeah. So when I when I was in Brazil, I, I'd so before I got the call, I'd fought three weeks before my UFC debut with a guy called Midnight. I fought in the the south of Brazil and I won a title there. Five. I knocked him out in the fourth round. And then when I got the call, I was sat with my wrestling coach in his house. Uh, we were smoking a bit of weed and having a bit of food. He used to love smoking weed, so I'd go round. I, I'm, I, you know, I don't fucking take any drugs and that, but I'd go round, he'd be smoking weed. Like, do you want some? All right, sad. So we, we had a little smoke of, of weed and, and we were eating steak and uh, mash. Never forget, he made a steak of mash and we were just chilling. No telly, no phones, nothing. Just a bit of music on. And I get a call from Marcelo and he's like, uh, do you want to fight in three weeks? And I was like, yeah, come on. And he was like, you're going to fight the former number one of, of who was number one in Brazil, Wendell. And I was just like, wow, my opportunity has came. He was like, but it, it's at well, so wait, Darren, how much you weigh? And I was like, oh, shit. I was like, I'm about 93k. So I don't, 93 kilos to get to 77k. Yeah, it's big. In, in seven days or eight days, it was. 
Uh, that's when the fight I got the call set eight days before my UFC debut. Sorry, I said three weeks, and he just went get on it now. So Tim was big into it. He was like, Darren, you need to eat this, 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 and you're just gonna have to smash a big weight cut the day before uh, weigh-ins and thingy. So after after he gave me the call, I went round to meet my friend's house who was smoking weed as well. <laughs> so he loved the weed, and he was like, wow. And we got a photo and we had a glass of wine to celebrate. I said, right, time to get to work. I went on a jog along the beach and I was just like, at that time, my daughter, uh, had she been born yet? I can't even remember. I can't even remember when my daughter was born. <laughs> but I was on my own in, in the apartment and I remember just coming back and I had a big fucking gallon, gallon of water and I was like, right, this is it. Went through the whole fight week, cut the weight and just absolutely demolished the kid in the second round. How was that feeling for you? Unbelievable, because when I walked out, every, at this point I wasn't very well known in Brazil, every single Brazilian booed and shouted things like, ooh, I'm more here, which means you're gonna die. And I was like, fuck, these are hostile. Then when I knocked them out, no one knew I speak, spoke fluent Portuguese. A translator came into the cage and the commentator was Brian, I can't remember the conversation at that point was coming and he was about to like ask this and I said grab the mic and then just started reeling off Portuguese and I could see people in the crowd going what the fuck and I was going I'm half Brazilian I've got a daughter here don't be booing me because I'm fucking Brazilian and next minute the arena just erupted and when I went backstage ESPN everyone was just trying to interview they were like you speak Portuguese and I'd saved it right up until that point, because I remember my coach Brick going, make sure you do your interview in Portuguese, Dad. And, and when the translator was getting out, I was thinking, do, do English, do Portuguese, English, Portuguese. And it was just, it was astronomical. Mm -hmm. Is that what you feel as if you'd entered the, like the MMA world? Yeah, because people were like, who's this ugly little Liverpool <laughs> lad living in Brazil and just absolutely smoked his opponents on his debut and then just spoke Portuguese? Who the fuck's he? And from that, fucking... You move through the ranks faster. You, you got a first three, four fights, and then is it cowboy? Yeah, I did, big test? I did go through the ranks fast, but I had a year in Brazil of, like, I'm not going to say deep depression, but I was really depressed because I won my first fight, and then my second fight got booked for the 24th of October in Dublin against Nicholas Dalby, and we were both unbeaten. And that actually was top 10 fights of that year. That year, I got a bonus and everything. We drew, yeah? But in the third round... I pulled my shoulder, I've got a scar on my shoulder, I pulled my shoulder out, so I fought for the whole third round with my shoulder out, and he just, he absolutely annihilated me, I got fight of the night, it was a great fight. After that then, I had to go and do shoulder surgery, and I'd split up uh, with me, daughter's my mom. daughter's mum. So 2016 in Brazil for me was like quite a dark place, I was I was like quite, I was drinking quite a lot to be honest with you, every, every day was an excuse to have like a bottle of Heineken. It was crazy, I was drinking every day. My shoulder was like thingied. For 16 months, I think it was, I was just had no direction, I got fat. I was I was properly on my own, and I could see my money going down. I was living in my friends, and I was like, then I spoke to Col, and I was like, Col, I think it's time to come back, you know what, I'm like, I'm like, when, when, when getting away to Brazil was the escape, getting away from Brazil was the escape. I'm mm -hmm. like the person, I, I, I don't like to stay in one spot for too long, that's why I'm saying to you, I'd love to go back to somewhere for, for, for a period of time. I feel like I'd come to me and then after the four years and Carl was like, yeah, I think it's time to. So sort yourself out to come back. Mm -hmm. So I had to go for like court to set up payments for my daughter. I had to get all my things in order and that because I had a life over there. Yeah. I, had, I, had a, I had a house, I had a car. And then same thing, I booked my ticket for the, the 25th. Christmas Day again? Christmas Day again. Do you think your life turns and falls then? 19 years, Brazil, back to Liverpool, 19 years, four years later, 23, now you're 27, you're kind of thinking the same. Yeah, yeah. You're thinking, maybe it's time for to change again. Yeah, I, I like change. Like, mm -hmm. uh, don't get me wrong. I, I change is good. Yeah, I don't think I could get a, I mean, when I say change, it'd have to be a change with, 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 with me coach. Like, I, co I couldn't leave, I'm just that too, too mm -hmm. close, that relationship coach. A student but every few years I like to do a change and I like to refocus I feel like you get it sometimes you just I feel like I anyway speaking for myself I, I just get into a bit of a the same thing and you forget what, very repetitive yeah and I, sometimes it's just good to just go whoa, whoa, change mm -hmm. 
wow, do you know what I mean? So but I, it's got you as far as it has it now, yeah. so it's clearly working. It works, yeah. What, so what was the what was Colin thinking when you were coming back? Was he worried about in case you slipped back into old habits again, got into trouble? No. Or did they believe in you that you were going yeah. to move through the gears? Yeah, no. He, he, I said, Colin, I'm coming back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's like speaking to me and that, and... and <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd absolutely destroyed all my money from the, the last UFC fight. So the, the bonus and everything that I'd got, which was in 2015, by the end of 2016, like in Brazil, that was like, what? 50 plus, like 350,000 reais, which is like, you can live like a fucking king forever. I just absolutely destroyed it, gone through it. I'm mm. like that. I just don't, <laughs> don't hold no value for money. I should hold more, but coming to the end, I was like, right, got no money, booked this ticket sort my child out and get back to England. So came back 25th of December, one of my good friends, fucking lifelong pal, uh, said, where are you? I said, I'm at the airport. There's no one here. Nothing's running trains, nothing. He said, okay. He, he's a, he buys and sells cars. He said, I'm going to buy a car from a guy now in London. I'm going to get him to drop it off at the airport for you and you can drive home. So I was like, okay, yes, sir. So he bought an s Reg Fiesta. It was a an absolute banger. Like when it turned up, it was a rust bucket. It was like <laughs> cluttering. And the guy was like, here's your car, mate, sad. I was like, sad. I'm back, in, I'm back in England, back to the grind. Absolutely murdered the Fiesta all the way uh, from London to Liverpool. There was not a soul on the motorway. Stopped, put 25 quid in the Fiesta. I think he still got the Fiesta to this day. Turned up at my granddad's. Didn't even tell my granddad was coming home. You okay, granddad? Oh my God, Darren, fucking wow. Went to his room, he's kept that spare room for me f- f- since he's at the house. Uh, and just lied there and I was like, right, back to it. And that was that? That was it. I, I got back to the gym. Colin looked at me and went, you fat cunt. Right, just give me all shit. He was like, time to get on it now. Booked me fight for May, fought in May, beat that top prospect. Fought in uh, September against a guy called Bojan Velikovic, was like, uh, top to be one of the top guys, destroy them, then for Cowboy. So I just went fight, fight, fight Cowboy. That was in October. How was it knowing that you were fighting Cowboy, a man who had been in the industry for the beginning, basically? That mentality I back then was different. I didn't ki- I didn't give no mm-hmm. fucks for no one or cared about anyone. Like, I didn't even... Like, I remember when he got the fight and he was like, yeah, it's just that until... Underestimate, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just this young kid coming up, you know, I'm just taking the fight, whatever, mm-hmm. Poland. I'm, I'll fight anyone, any town, like... And I remember just watching it thinking, you just don't know what you're in for. I'm a better striker than you. I'm younger, I'm hungrier. I'm going to fucking end your world for you. And at that point, Colin was just like, this is the time now till. Then four weeks before the fight, I uh, tore my knee in, in sparring. And Col- it was a Thursday, Col said, right, I want you to go home. I want you to rest today, tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, come back Monday, and we'll see if I have to pull you out the fight or not. And I was like, you ain't pulling me out this fight, Col. I'm doing this fight regardless. Came back on the Monday, my knee was still shattered, I couldn't do anything. I just got on the treadmill and uh, I remember one of the guys in the gym was like, what are you doing? I said, this is going to be done. <laughs> Sprinted on that treadmill for 50 minutes and was just like, I don't give a fuck about that knee. Mm-hmm. That was the same knee I actually ruptured now in, in the Whitaker fight. I mean, both my knees need surgery and I was just like, nah, ain't nothing or no one stopping me from fighting Cowboy. Is that why you came out the traps flying then? Did you try to end it as quick as you did? Because you came out flying, you put him on the deck a few yeah, times as well. Yeah, the first. I just, I just remember like just having this. I, I don't know. I just, I just knew I was better than him. Like I knew he, he was a good striker, but I knew I was a masterful striker, and I could just, I could just go in there and bully him. And not to take away the fact, you know, I don't think he's a proper welterweight. That doesn't mean anything. Like if you're a man over sixty kilos, wait, wait, wait. Obviously, we have weight in MMA, but like lightweight to welterweight is not a big difference. Do you know what I mean? Was, mm-hmm. I just knew I was the bigger man, the better man. So I just knew I could come out the banks and just fucking absolutely. To be honest, I need a little bit of that back. Do you know what I mean? I just come out the banks and tore his head off. Do you miss that, Dan? Yeah, like knowing that you 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 had you just there's a there's something there, and you know you fucking know I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> no, mate. no, mate. There's a click. <laughs> yeah. And it's funny because I, my last fight was against one of the world's elite, Robert Wilson, the former champion, and. Even though I lost a decision like that, the fifth round, he, he scored the takedown on me. Like, I'm fighting these elites and I don't I don't even feel like I got out of first gear. I feel like I coasted the fight. 
How was that without the fans as well? That, that doesn't, doesn't really bother you. I, I didn't think about that. I, I actually liked it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was better. It was more, there was less drama. Like, you know, when you come into an arena, sometimes, like I fought at Madison Square Garden, and you're just like, wow, like the bright lights and the crowd just gets you a bit. You're like, oh, that's edgy stuff. With that, it was like, get in, fight, home. There, there was no big build up. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I, I enjoyed it. I never come out with no fight music or nothing. Yeah. But did, they, did they fast track you through it? They fast tracked you fast, Dana. Is that because they've seen your potential, how much money you can make for them of as course, well? Of course, 100%. With the fans and how big Liverpool is with I, their support? I just think uh, now, even the UFC, they see how I am and they see the, the fan base I've got and the person I am. I think, I think they sit there at night and say, We hope that until beats this guy because we want him to be. A, I know they want me to be a champion. I, I know for a fact they want me to be a champion. I want me to be a champion. Little things have to be done. Mm-hmm. But, of course, they fast-track you. you. You'd be lying. I can't sit here and go, no, I had the hardest fights. Yeah, I had tough fights. I fought one of the best strikers in, in the whole of the UFC, Wonderboy. I fought a dominant champion in Woodley. I fought the best people, but they've just given me a fight-fight. Go for that big fight. You know, it hasn't been like... 10 fights, yeah. then a main event. Throw in the deep end straight away, because after Cowboy, you got Wonder Boy. At Liverpool? Yeah, at Echo. Yeah. Did you know that the Echo was happening? Your hometown? I'd campaigned for it for a long time, and, and they always said it was impossible. Now, the reason it was impossible was because the toilet structure in the Echo. <laughs> Everybody in taking gear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Scouts is out. <laughs> Talking, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so he was just like, we can't do it because of the way the structure. And I was like, that's bullshit. I was like, you can make that happen. And then I think I had a phone call with Dana and I said, Dana, make UFC Liverpool happen. The next day I got a call. You can't tell no one nothing, that and they're going to make it happen. Dana's been on the phone and said, whatever you have to do, make that shit happen. Then they told me at UFC London, they were like, it's happening until March, eight, sorry, May. You're gonna fight, and I was like, "Who am I fighting?" They're like, "The China fans, your opponents." And Wonderboy kept turning the fight down. Why? I, th- I just think that he thought he was in a higher rank and I've been fast tracked and I don't deserve it. But how the fuck are you meant to get anywhere if the top guys don't want to fight the lower mm-hmm. guys? That's how you get to the top, fighting the better guys. So I was like, "Nah, fuck that, get him to fight." So then I called him out a little bit, and then he accepted the fight. Does that work? That calling him out, does it work? People go, "Fuck him, I'll show him." Then, <laughs> do you know with me? Yeah. That, no, do you know with me if someone called me out that would work because I'd be like this cunt's not calling me out I'm getting on mm-hmm. I think with a lot of fighters they, sometimes they'll just dismiss it like I'd called Wonderboy out a lot and he just dismissed me and then I don't know what turned in him where he was like nah fuck this I'm going to show this young kid what it's about but Colin is always on at me like when fighters call me out I'm mm-hmm. just dead quick to reply I'm like you want some do you little cunt he's like stop giving everyone time of day Darren. like don't get me wrong I love the feud with Mike Perry but not to be disrespectful, he's nowhere near close to be getting a fight with me. How the fuck? He's not even ranked. He needs to beat people first before he fights me. I'm fighting the elites. I, I, I've fought the best, beat the best, and been beaten by the best. He, he's not He's not close. Mm-hmm. He's not my weight. He's not fighting the best. We've just got a little tiff for tat feud going on. How was the weight cut with the Wonder Boy? Because I know you struggled with that. We actually watched the weight cut video before you came in, and that, that looked brutal. Listen... As if you nearly killed yourself to cut weight. I know you've had Tony Bell you on and that, and he's a, he used to be an extreme weight, cousin. Mm-hmm. There ain't a man alive who used to cut weight like me, who, who had the mentality for it. I used to be an extreme, unhealthy weight. Like it was, it was damaging. Do you enjoy that? Yeah, I used not not the not the last weight cuts that I had for uh, Masvidal and Wonderboy. Like me Woodley weight cut was fine. But not fine at this. I, listen, look at the size of me. I, I like I was making seventy seven kilos. Like, I, and I was extreme weight cutting. It was like forty kilos, thirty kilos cutting it. But then, like the night before weigh-ins, cutting like ten kilos. I, 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 to be honest, I was in the business of being like, the best weight cutter, and I did enjoy it. But my last weight cut to one seventy was against Masvidal, and I remember going blind a few hours before weighing in. I remember I'd cut, we got to the hotel and it was the night before weigh-ins and I remember I, I'd done my usual, i do like a 50 minute run uh, with four layers of clothing on with all my sweet sweats, you know, like the, 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 the gels and that. Lost weight, went in hip pads and and I was still so far off and Colin was just like, 
what the fuck are we going to do? And I was like, put me back on the treadmill, I'm going to run again. He was like, and Colin is so brutal, but even Colin was like, nah, you can't. I was like, get me back on that treadmill now. Went back on the treadmill, and at this point, I was just on the treadmill, and the screen was like just fuzzing, and I was going, wow. And I was just toddling along, and then I was hitting me pads, still had way to go. And I was like, right, call, call, just let me go and sleep for a few hours and I'll carry on. He was like, Darren, I can't, no. I said, call, just trust in me, please, I know what I'm doing. He's like, Darren, Darren. Went to sleep, woke up. All right, I went on another run. And at this point, I was just like, literally, I couldn't even move. My body was shutting down and I was just going blind. And then I'd, I'd, I'd had like, I had like 0.4 grams to go, which sounds nothing, but it's a lot at that point. Your body's not giving nothing more. I'd done my saunas and everything. And then Colin went to sleep. And I was in the room with my friend uh, at the time and he was sleeping and I don't know if he heard me wake up or not, but I, I got up, put my clothes on and I thought, right, if I walk the Asda, I'll lose that weight. So I started walking the Asda and I had just had to sit on like a bench and I just, I was blind and I had to like grab my phone, half like dial it and I was like, Colin, I'm blind here, I can't move. Colin come running along, uh, Colin John come running along and they were like, they had to like head on me back to the hotel. They were like, and I was just like, wow. And then when I was going to weigh in, he was like, Darren, look strong. And I was like that on the scales. Just like, wow. And, you know, I can give the excuses that, uh, oh, I got beat because of the weight cut. I got beat by the better man on the night. I'm a better fighter than the three guys I've lost to. This is what I tell you. If I didn't believe that, I'd probably half quit now. I know I'm better than the three people that have beat me. I know that for a fact, but to do a weight cut like that 24 hours before you're fighting the best people in the world is just like mentally How insane. How much stress is that on your team as well, knowing that you're, it's, it's close every time? A lot of it stress. must be difficult. On, a lot of stress on Colin, my teammates, uh, even a lot of stress on the UFC. They're putting these events on, main events. Like I've sold out the Echo, Madison Square Garden, I've sold out the O2 Arena, and I've sold them up the quickest. Like, in, we're talking combat sports like think about that if that fight doesn't go ahead because I've collapsed through extreme weight cutting like I used to do the most brutal weight cuts but again only myself to blame because 10 weeks before that I'm fucking sat there cheeseburgers uh, watching Narcos Mexico <laughs> 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 so we've, we've had this conversation I'm not going to sit here and blame anyone and I, I am, I'm going to take all my losses in life and I'm going to put them all onto me Mm -hmm. My last loss, I mean, my last fight, fucking, I'm happy, but I'm sad. I, I should have just fucking went for it, and I, I know I'd have got him out of there, but, you know, uh, everything that's happened inside the cage and outside, these losses are all down to me. They ain't down to no one else. That's how I think. That's how I like to look at it. It makes me stronger knowing that I nearly missed weight because of me. Not because Colin was shoving cheeseburgers in my face, because I, 10 weeks before the fight, was eating how I shouldn't have ate. I don't get me wrong, at middleweight now, I, I can, I'm comfortable, I can eat what I want. You know, I, I'm not the strictest on my diet, but at welterweight, for me to stay at welterweight would have been 365 days a year, probably just eating leaves because I was just too big for the weight. Mm -hmm. I up to me think I was. How was it coming out of the Echo with Sweet Caroline absolutely popping? It's one of the best entrances I've ever seen, to be honest. It was, um, you looked you looked happy. <laughs> you saw you did. You looked buzzing. If, if you see me face when I walked out to Sweet Caroline at the Echo and then you see me face when I walked out in London to it, two totally different people. Like the dad in London was just rage, just full rage, whereas mm -hmm. in, in Liverpool I was just like, <laughs> I was the, yeah. at the end of the day I was the main fucking man I was just breathing it in and taking it in. and I was like wow I don't want this to end and I remember looking at Dana's face and Dana was just like listen to be inside there you've never seen nothing like it it was just full to the brim just everyone was there for me they weren't there for Dana or Colin or Wonderboy they were there for that until and I picked the perfect song and it was just why did you pick that song? because I loved I loved the song and Liverpool were playing the same weekend as well uh, and I just knew the way it sold out I knew what what type of crowd was going I just knew that every single person mother child father 
fan would just be mm. off the seats screaming at the top of the lungs the song so I'd done it and it just became my song like mm-hmm. I'm not asked when anyone's like, <laughs> it's called that mm-hmm. until Sweet Caroline it's not Neil Diamond mm-hmm. because it's my song your family must have been proud of you at that moment they was yeah me, me mother me uncle me father they, they were all like this is our boy yeah. look what he's doing you know but I don't feel like you take these moments in right until you retire and you look back. I feel like if you've sp- spoke to Bell, you be- like people like Bell, you retire. They've they just want to come back. More. They just he's bored, yeah. bored in life. I and, love Tony, man. He's a great guy. Yeah, and you see all these fighters, Mike Tyson's and Roy Jones. They just back can't let again. it go. They just can't let it go. <laughs> it's in their blood. Yeah, it's in the blood. Mm-hmm. So I haven't looked back on Liverpool and really cherished the moments I haven't looked back on anything and cherished it I feel like I really will when I retire and it's probably going to be the same outcome retire want to come back because nothing beats like fighting's an individual sport nothing beats walking out and having your hand raised mm-hmm. that that's like adrenaline that you can't get from drugs or anything that is just a, a drug inside you that we're, we're just made with and one in the fight as well that must have been a special moment yeah yeah. To eventually get your hand raised and beating the man who pressed never wanted to fight you at the start. At the end of the day, we do this to win. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't do this just to be a good sport. And, oh, it was a great fight. Oh, I lost that fight, but it was great. I do this fucking sport. Not for the fucking entrances or anything. I do this fucking sport so my hand can be raised mm-hmm. at the end. And then you called out for the... You wanted to be the world champion, then <laughs> yeah. you, you got... You, you don't fuck about with the mic, do you, man? Is, that, <laughs> is he a fighter or an entertainer? It's a bit of both, isn't Yeah, it? you've got to be. I th- I've seen a lot of... Uh, a lot of fighters have got mixed thoughts and reviews, and as I've been getting bigger and coming up more, I, I just think it's ent- we're in the entertainment business, so I think the social media, the mic, the call-outs, the fucking being a jack the lad funny person, that is all just what people love. People ultimately want to see great fights, but people love the, the bravado. Yeah, That's the hate, why, like, yeah. I, I've got... I actually wrote this down, and... A lot, a lot of times you'll hear people say, no, actions speak louder than words. And I, and I think to myself, that's not necessarily true because sometimes you could fight a fighter who's probably better than you and you could just get in his head with words and then change the course of the fight because his, his head's completely fell off because of what you've said. So all this bravado and that, it just makes more for the fight. It's just fucking, it makes it all better. It's the entertainment business. Let's entertain people. Yeah. So you got your world title fight after that. You were flying, undefeated, very tough fight. Woodley, how was that experience getting in the cage with him? Do you know what? I just, I, I just put at that time these fights with Wonderboy. I missed weight for Wonderboy, and all these fights leading up until I fought Woodley and and, and my last fight at welterweight Masvidal, I wasn't thinking fight. I was thinking weight. So don't get me wrong, like it was great, but I didn't show the Darren Till in that fight. I just showed that Darren Till could make weight because I made weight for the Woodley fight and I'd put all my stress and my energy into making weight when I didn't even put any focus on to fighting one of the best fighters in the world at that time. What like, pressure came on you? Because after I'd missed weight with Wonderboy, that, that's, that's all people cared about. People didn't care about him. He was like, yeah, but he shouldn't be at world's weight. He, he, he can't make weight. Uh, you're giving him a title fight. He can't make weight. And... Every day, even a new column was worried. It was like, what have you read? What have you done? I was just, I wasn't going to train and thinking about techniques and sparring. I was going to train and thinking, have I lost enough weight there today? Uh, have I drank enough water to flush my system up? Like, that was my whole focus and mentality leading up to the Woodley fight. How was, about Woodley. how was the weight cut? It was disgusting again. Like, yeah. I, made it, I made it a lot easy. Easier than the previous fights. Uh, but again, it was just uh, the whole process. If someone, if 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 you could have a twenty-four hour camera around the whole process leading up and day before weigh-ins, you'd just be like, "That is so unhealthy, beyond belief. Like it's damaging. It's it's potentially lifelong damaging. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I was the, the day before Woody, I cut like ten ten kilos in in a few hours. Mm-hmm. Like, and all these other guys are cutting weight with a few kilos and that, and I'm just in there, just skin and bone, and just my face is so just dried in and dragged in, and not healthy. How not, was it losing that first fight? It pissed me off. It fucking. I shouldn't have lost. 
should, should, should have beat that guy. I was better than I, I am a better fighter than Tyron Woodley. I'm a better fighter than George Masvidal, and I'm a better fighter than Robert Whittaker. But that was my first loss in MMA on the biggest stage possible. I was just, I was like, I was so close in touch and distance for that title. But when I sit here now, I'm like, fucking so glad and happy that I did lose, and I have lost, and I've had fans, and I've had people turn against me, and oh, he's not going to be a champion and all that. I, I've actually, I've absolutely loved and cherished every moment of it. Yeah, you embraced that. You're still young, man. 27. This was all when what? You're 25. Uh, 24, 25. 25. Doing all this, and yeah. I've had all this experience, all this. These, I say troubles, I've had these losses, these troubles inside, outside the cage. I just don't even feel like I'm hitting me prime yet. I feel like I'm learning so much day to day in, in, in my gym. And I, I I think I've got three more years to hit me prime. They say in MMA that you hit your prime in your 30s. I've got three more years of learning, getting better. I've got fucking eight more years to be a world champion. But yeah, I'm, you'll do that within two. I'm going to do it in two. Yeah, yeah okay. I believe so. As I say to you, you've got to be held accountable and take into account everything mm-hmm. what you're doing day to day. Do you think you're maturing more? I'd like to think so. Check your social media, mate. It would be debatable. <laughs> deb- debatable. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love social media, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. It's, it's great, but as I say to you, you should take it with a pinch of salt. On social media, I'm the most immature man going. But in life, I, th- I don't know if I can sit here and say I am mature because... Just the other night, I was doing donuts and wheelies on my quad. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm immature. You, you, you say that, but pff, I don't know. You must be, though, because you're, you're speaking about it. You're identifying these things now where you're opening up and going, you know what? Yeah, I could be doing this better. I could be doing that better. That's when you will make the changes. You know what needs to be done. Look how far you've already come. Yeah. I, it's, it's hard. You've just... For me, I, I'm, I'm a very, like... I'm very in my head a lot. I'm quite crazy. I need to just, I'm 100% or nothing. So as I say to these little moves away, why I like them is because then it just gives me to be 100%. In my head, I'm sort of, if I'm given 10% to, let's say, my business and then 10% to my friends, in my own head, I'm thinking, oh, I'm not giving enough. So just just, just go like that. Whereas I just want to be not like waking up and it's, all about the gym revolves around the gym. I don't want to yeah. be going and doing these meetings about my house and everything. I don't really give a fuck about them. But then these take over your life because this is everyday life. Mm-hmm. I'm in my own head so much, whereas I just want to be waking up and just going to the gym 100%, 100%. Fuck these other things. Yeah. Who was it? You had a fight book for the 5th of December and that's the first fight you've ever pulled out of. Yeah. How was that experience? You know what? When we talk about maturity, I think this was the first time I'd matured on a level in fighting because I've, I've got my both my knees are destroyed it's fucking my whole body is shattered I've never been 100% in a fight but I've only just come off this this injury off the last fight with Robert when I tore my MCL and I said to Cole straight away right me, me knee will be okay in a few weeks Cole you can book a fight and he's like okay they want, they want you to fight in December main event against Jack and he's like you know if you beat Jack you're getting that title shot and I was like I know I know and then as I gradually grew closer to the fight Carl's just like, your knee's not looking good, is it? I was doing everything on it, I was wrestling fine, but he was like, one little smudge in the fight, it's going to go. So I was like, okay, pull me out, Carl. I was like, give me more time to get stronger, better, healthier, fitter, and next year we go again. And and I, I don't like to say this, next year is going to be my year. I, I hate stuff like that, but I've actually turned around and said to Carl, I can't wait for next year. I'm looking forward to what's to come. Not in life, just in fighting next year for me. Who's on the radar for you? Right now, do you know, right now I, I haven't even looked at anyone. I just want to get better. And next year say, right, go, go for that. But right now I just want to cure myself. Mentally, physically? Yeah, I, th- I think f- physically, fuck, fuck, fuck the physical. Physic- physically, my body's going to be fucking broken when I retire anyway. Mm-hmm. It's mentally, it's all, it's, 90% mental. Yeah. What's your plans for the future then? I just want to be a world champion. You will be? I just want to be a world champion. I don't mm-hmm. want to be anything else. I just want to be a world champion. I'm, I'm going to have to do whatever it takes to be a world champion. What do you think it needs to change to take you there, to get you that extra inch? I think that that, that until now just it needs to be a little bit more disciplined in, in certain areas. Maybe, let's say, not so... Not sh- 
they're not big things. It's just, as I said to you, I think one, distractions is a big thing for me. And just other small tweaks inside the gym and outside, but just 100% devoted to what what I'm saying. Mm. If I want to be a world champion, I've got to be 100% devoted to it. Yeah. And right now, I'm not. But you will be, you're talking about it, you can see that it's coming again, where you're just going to switch that fucking go right, it's game time again. I hope so. I hope yeah. that I'm sitting to you in five years' time with me three belts and not in five years' time saying, oh, I nearly got there, James. Nah. It, you know, I'll not be having you on if you've not got any belts, <laughs> mate, so get your finger out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. it, but what's, what, what's good is to, to, to identify it as well. That, that could potentially happen in five years' time. It mm-hmm. could be one of them. You know, these guys you see in pubs, oh, I could have been like that. I was good, I was good. That can happen to any of us. And, you can't just, I can't just sit back and go, no, no, I'm doing everything possible, everything's fine, everything's hunky and dory. I need to identify that there's little things that need to be tweaked to get there and not to be the guy standing on the bar going, could have been, been me that. Could have been contender, yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? How's your relationship with Dana now? It's okay. De- Listen, I, I don't speak badly about Dana. If I've ever got a problem personal with Dana, I'll message him or ring him. I've got his phone number. But, I know without Dana saying it, he wants to be me. He wants me to be a champion. They had the first British champion, uh, sorry, English champion in Mike Bisping. They've had Connor, the Irish champion. But I know they want me to be the next English champion. I know they do. It's because of the backing that Liverpool give you. Do you know what I mean? They yeah. know they're going to fucking follow. And anywhere. England, do you know I'll be totally honest with you? The whole of the UK, you're massive up in Scotland as well. Scotland, you're fucking you, not set t- for Greenock. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. When I've been to places like Scotland and little places in England, little villages and everything, people love me. They're like, wow, Darren, I, you know what? It's mad the love I get. But that's everywhere as well. Like, when I've been in America a lot of times and, and places in Europe, people do show me a lot of love. They are big fans of me. So mm-hmm. I know the UFC identify that and I know they're like, as soon as Darren's a world champion, she's going to go, Whoa. Yeah. Just another couple of questions, but I know you're good friends with Terry, who was in a UFC. How's yeah. that? He was a great fighter, tough as fuck. How's that relationship? Because I know you've got a lot of respect for Terry. Yeah, Terry, Terry's like, since day one, since I got into him, he's just been like my biggest idol. I've just Because I've I seen what, what he was capable of in the gym and what he'd done in his fights. The, the, I think with Terry, what happened at the end, like Terry had that, he had a vicious knockout with like Edson Barbosa. And I think from that, He's told me himself, uh, it's funny because I like to choose my words carefully with Terry so he doesn't fuck me up. He's one guy who could, <laughs> but I think he just lost the love. He said to me, Dad, the love wasn't there no more. I wasn't getting up in the morning for me runs. I wasn't coming to the gym and giving it me all. And he said, I, I sort of realised that that was the time to step back. And, and I say to him nowadays, I said, Terry, you know what? Even if you came back to train now, you could probably still be a champion because I've seen it. And he's like, I know, but the love's not there. And... For me, that proper hurts me deep down because I know what Terry, even though he achieved m- amazing great things anyway, I know what he could have been. Do you know what I mean? And I could probably even take inspiration from that to like kick on again yourself. Yeah, like I've got, to, I've got, I've got to carry the torch for Terry and Colin, like to be that world champion, that first world champion from Liverpool, from Team Carbon. Mm-hmm. And you will be. Do when you go at the jail in Tenerife, how long are you in for? Four days. How was that? I'll tell you what, mate. I, I hope I never go to jail. <laughs> they don't fuck about over I, there. I, 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 listen, I'm, I'm one of these people. I actually, uh, I've, I've got a really good friend who, who, who's in jail now and he rings me every weekend. He just rings me to just, as you say, shoot the shit. He just talks about mm-hmm. life. And I always say to him, I say, listen, mate, I want to be honest <laughs> with you. Because he goes to me, he goes, like, you're mentally strong. I'm like, yeah, but I'm not mentally strong for them jails because mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm never going to jail. He's like, <laughs> like we, the guy's got us. Like, so the police turned up like in the street the taxi was like all the way up the street and the first thing they said was Darren Till and I was like yeah yeah but I was like I haven't done nothing 10 of them get on the ground now and I was like what I haven't done anything cuff me S- sent me and me four mates to the cells meet the roughest I-, I had to have a shit in the corner of one of the cells because <laughs> they wouldn't let me go to the toilet so the m- my mate who was in the cell with me was like Darren get rid of that shit it uh-huh. fucking stinks it's got flies mm-hmm. I was like there's nowhere else to put it they wouldn't let me go for shit mm-hmm. but what's hilarious about that story is when they put us in the cells the first night one of the guards he was like one of the must have been a lieutenant or whatever c- come to see me he was like Darren 
I'm a big fan. He was like, do you need anything? And I was like, I've got a little bit of food. There'd be nice little go on my phone. He was like, I'll sort it, no worries. So he comes back like, ha. he went, is that your good mate as well? And my mate's looking at me as if say, say, yeah, that I'm fucking hungry as well. Comes back, big fucking uh, breast of chicken, rice, avocado, salad, and a smoothie. And he went, go, on, go and sit in, in, in the holding area, I'll give you your phones. And I was like, fuck, this is some guy, this, so we were eating. I was on the phone, and at that point, no one knew about it, but my girlfriend had texted me, she's like, where are you, I haven't heard from you. I was like, listen, I'm in jail, <laughs> I've been nicked, I'll be out in a few days. And then I couldn't see a reply, because I, I had to get off my phone. We were just in there for four days, mate, it was the grimmest thing ever. We were eating like these stale crackers every day, it was grim. Like, that chicken breast was the best thing about it. Every day was fucking horrible. And then we got out, and the judge just didn't fuck about. He was just like, you cheeky bastards. You come in here, you think you can fucking do this, do that. He was like, give me your passports, 15,000 euros to, uh, to leave the fucking island. My friends didn't have any money. So I just have to, I had to pay the 15,000 euros. We tried to go round to sleep in hotels when we got out until we, the, the, the money had uh, cleared, the international money. Every hotel had been sent a fax from the police station, don't let these guys stay here. So we were going and they were like, can't. We ended up having to stay in this little apartment. And then at that point, the Daily, the daily Mail, the Daily Star, the Mirror, the Echo, it just came out. And I was just getting phone calls and I was just like, airplane mode, <laughs> bump, <laughs> bump, <laughs> fuck that shit. Did somebody steal a taxi? Sorry? Did someone steal a taxi? Yeah, well, I, I, was, I read this story and I was laughing because I'm thinking, man, if that was me, I'd been the fucking taxi with them, man. <laughs> I, I'll tell you the God's honest truth about this story. I won't hold nothing back. I actually wasn't meant to go on this trip. They were going for one of our mates' birthdays the, to Tenerife and they told me about it. And I went and said to Col, I said, Col, I'm all right to miss a few days of training and I'm going to go to Tenerife. Col's one of them, he's very uh, silent in what he says but he's got a tone to him. And he went, listen, I don't think it's a good idea, son, because you're a bit, you're not all there, but okay. Because I, I, as I said to you, I'm 100%. I won't just go out and drink five pints. I'll go out and drink 100 pints and steal taxis. That's what I do. That's my thing. <laughs> but I said, okay, call Sand. I said, I'll be good. So we got there the first night. They, they, these guys have booked themselves a five-star hotel. I just jumped on the holiday. So got there, five-star hotel, got in the room, fucking lovely lavish. Right, let's get out there. So we went out to like the strip in Tenerife, everyone knew me. Yes, that and buying me shots, so that was it. Just fucking going insane. Ended up in this proper exclusive bar. We we were just going mental. Uh, ended up in McDonald's, blah, blah, blah. Got a taxi back to the, the hotel. Now, I've done this a few, th few times bef before this incident, so I must have a thing for it. As my mates are walking through the hallway, I've grabbed the fire extinguisher and just went... <laughs> Just sprayed them. Next minute, one of them have grabbed the fire extinguisher. <laughs> we went in the room, and do you know what? I'm actually quite embarrassed talking about this. Story. It's funny, but it's actually I shouldn't have done it. We've destroyed the room. We're throwing we're throwing mattresses off the balcony. Then some guy, I think my friend has actually got a video. Some guy at the bottom come started shouting. <laughs> I've got a tech chair through it off the balcony, and and he's like, uh, he's just like. Oh, come back in. We're just going mental. We've grabbed our suitcases before the hotel staff could come. We've went out the fire exit. We've gone up this hill. We've went to another hotel. We've rang a taxi to the hotel. As this taxi's come, I've sat in the back of the taxi. We're all loading our suitcases into the uh, into the back. One of my friends has jumped in. What he thought was the passenger side, but it was the driver's side over there to the side. And I went, what are you doing? He went, fuck, I thought it was the Pazzy side. He went, ah, fuck it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, no, lad. And I'm in the back going, stop it. I'm going, drive it back now. We'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And he's like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> he went on a whole trip around the island. He was doing donuts and skids. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the back going, crying. I'm going, stop the taxi, please. <laughs> lad, we're going to get fucked. He skidded the taxi, bombed it out. So I've run the other way, I've thought I need to get away from him, fuck that. And I've sat by this car and I've thought I'm just going to sit here. I'm not going to act like I'm running away or anything, I've sat here. Then he's come running back and I've went, no, get away from me, lad. go go somewhere else. He's all attention next minute. These busies have just all pulled up and just 
grabbed us. They just knew straight away, and they were just like, "Fuck!" Have the that. guns out now? They had the guns out. They all knew who I was. They must have been like they were big fans and that. But any excuse to arrest me, they were going to arrest me, and and, and that was it. And then. Eve, I didn't really come out to anyone say so I didn't steal a taxi or anything it was just basically that until steals taxi in Tenerife mm -hmm. you have to go with that headline I can't yeah. come out and say I didn't steal a taxi even yeah, though I didn't that's you sticking your friend on as well isn't it <laughs> that's it, it was, it I was crashed him say, say no names <laughs> <laughs> but he fucking he, listen I took the rap for him I, I got a few fucking beatings off Colin mm -hmm. got shouted at but that was it what did that, the UFC in that say they just shake their heads do you know what mate it's, 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 it's a tough one with the UFC because with boxing, it's very different. Like I remember Billy Joe last lockdown done that video, mm -hmm. saying if your woman gives you shit, yeah, like, punching the bag, yeah, hilarious. But the uh, the British Boxing Board of Control like banned them. Like took us, I don't know what he's on. He took his license and anything. I thought the video was hilarious. He was just joking clearly. But okay, we're in the the, the era of people getting offended. People get offended. The UFC is totally different. I think, obviously, as we spoke about, if you're not like, they're not fucking, they're not bothered, like. And more publicity for them. Yeah, like I, I remember the boss, not Dana, the boss, boss, him texting me. He's like, "Any support you need, Dad, I'm right here." And I'm like, "Fucking hell!" You know, and obviously you can't take the piss if you do something severe. They've got to cut you and let you go. Blah blah blah. But they were just willing to support me. <laughs> so, but is that not worse for you, knowing that you've kind of got? The backing, no matter what you yeah, do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Tonight I'm going out stealing some taxis. <laughs> <I'll come laughs> <with you. laughs> if everywhere was over, me and you'd be a dangerous combo. But they, they, they were supportive, which I have mm -hmm. to fucking be. I think in there is the problem. Listen, he hasn't killed no one. He hasn't beaten no one up. On, he hasn't. Blah blah blah. We'll support him in this. Yeah. Obviously, there's a there's a line you you do not cross. Of course. It. Same on social media. There's always there's that invisible line. Don't cross it. Play with You're it. You're playing with it yeah, a lot. I play with yeah. it. But don't cross it. Mm -hmm. Like last week could have been a bad one, you know, if, if I actually did offend a, a, a transgender woman, man, whatever. But I didn't. But I do. I, I, I play with that line. Is that but, why you delete your apps a lot? No. I, 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 the thing, I have I have my two apps on my phone. I have Twitter and I have Instagram. Now I'm quite active on my Instagram. I have to be for me, uh, you know, uh, promoting bit me businesses. I've got a few sponsors that support me. But at the same time, I, I just love having a fucking laugh on yeah, it. Yeah. I post a lot of bullshit, but uh, I've, my account's been deleted a few times now. So I don't know whether it's because of reports of like memes or videos or whatever, but that, that, that's that been deleted. But sometimes what I like to do is just turn the apps off my phone. Like the Twitter app, what I'll do is I'll have a big rant on Twitter, but then I'll delete it off my phone because I don't want to be sat there, especially with Twitter. It can be such a draining thing mm -hmm. with all these opinions and... You can really get brought, like, dragged into it, especially a lot of negative comments. Can you imagine, as I told you about moderation every day, if people were just saying that until you're just a piece of shit? I'd probably start thinking, I actually am a piece of shit here, so yeah. I think it's good to have moderation. Yeah, it can everything. affect you. Your businesses, will touch on that before we finish up, brother. Just give them a plug. Your watches, where can people get them? Off, off, off my... Uh, uh, there's a separate there's a separate Instagram uh, called the Marvy. Uh, just go the link there. We'll link the links in the description. Yeah. You're boozing now. Can you talk about that? Are you going through some it, sort of legal battle? No, yeah. The, so the raw dog is basically me, me little baby. We mm -hmm. all know where it's come from. And to be honest, it's absolutely smashed it. Like after the Whitaker fight, Colin, who's I involve in every one of my businesses, and one of the guys who's like a, a photographer for me, they were just like begging me to be like, Darren, make a brand out of this. Everyone wants a t shirt. Do I do it? And I just went, Okay, we set the company up. But I've always wanted to be quite different. I said, but what we're going to do, we're not going to release a T-shirt so people can buy it whenever, next year, in five years' time. I said, we're going to make everything we do on this Raw Dog limited edition. I said, so we're going to release a T-shirt. It's, it's going to be only for seven days. And that T-shirt ain't never coming back. Maybe when we do Christmas fillers and all that, we'll mm -hmm. bring it back. But everything's going to be limited edition. So when I started doing that, for everything... I, I brought out t-shirts, lighters and that. I done a promo ad, promo video with it. So I, I started doing promo videos, releasing uh, hats, t-shirts, lighters. Then everyone was coming to the idea with me. Like, Darren, your name, your, your brand is called Raw Dog. What does that mean? I'm like, well, Raw Dog on someone's beard. Raw Dog, <laughs> raw dog, raw dog on your beard with, with, with no condom. Uh -huh. He was like, so when do people mostly have sex? He's like... They're like, after the night out, after they've been on the booze. I'm like, oh, yeah. Colin was like, we need to release a beer. 
And I was like, good idea. Then, through a friend of a friend, a brewery got in touch. I'm like, we want to make raw dog beer. So, they, they come to me, they be like, we're going to make raw dog beer, blah, blah, blah. This price is all that. I was like, whatever, I'm last. I made one mistake with my beer is the price when we released it was too high. But that was because of the making and the brewery and, and people involved. That was my one mistake. I'll say this on camera now. I'm actually working hard to change that around. I want the beer in every bar place all over the world. I've had people from Brazil, from Spain, Dubai. I've had restaurants in town all wanting to stock it. So I know that this road dog potentially for me is going to be in five years' time, a massive, massive area. Like proper 12, yeah. kind of, like yeah. mcgregor -esque. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And it's it's a fun brand. People are buying into it. But what's recently happened is uh, G-Star Raw, I've sent a cease and desist letter. I don't even know what... I, listen, I, I'm, not, I'm not the cleverest. They sent the letter and I was just like, solicitor, can you please read that? And it was basically, they want us to stop trading. They've basically said that they own the trademark for RAW, which is R-A-W, and we, we're basically trading and it's affecting what, whatever that means, yeah? So they, they've, uh, they've, they've sent this letter, I think last week or the week before, and when I've looked into it with my guys, they've sued Nike, H&M, they've sued so many people, and they're very brutal with it. So right now, it is like sort of the process of seeing where do we go? Changing the name, maybe. Change the name. Speak to them. Maybe they want to get involved. Maybe they got in touch because they, they love the brand. But that tells me too. Like that tells me a few things. That tells me that they feel threatened, and that tells me that this brand, even at this, it's been going a few months, has gathered so much momentum. Because everyone mm -hmm. I speak now, the first thing they say to me, don't talk about finding scene. Raw dogs smashing it, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, it, it actually mm -hmm. is. We've, we've like, we've done really well. It's fucking absolutely mm -hmm. smashing it. Fair so, play, brother. I hope I get past yeah, that. Yeah, fair play for all the businesses. For your achievements so far at the ages of 27, it's phenomenal. You should be proud of yourself. I am. For how far you've come from a lot of people take inspiration of what you're doing. A lot of people will be looking up to you. And I know all your stuff you do on social media is all a bit of fun and it's daft, but you're still only 27, mate. When I was your age, fuck me, man. I was... <laughs> I would get through off YouTube, mate, if I was to tell you the <laughs> shit that I'd done, man. Um, but for coming on today, brother, and telling your stories... Thank you. I very much Thanks appreciate it. It's phenomenal. A shout-out to Tony Morel and um, Craigie Boy at the Only Fools Bar for setting us up as well. I really appreciate it, and good luck for the future. World title in the next 18 months, and I look you, forward James. to seeing appreciate it. it. God bless you, you, brother. Check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.